What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Phil Brunell, aka Darkside Phil here. Fuck off, you're gone, don't come back. When you look at the black and white, when you look at the facts, you know that it's bullshit. You are actually dumb. Oh, because I'm good at Metal Gear, oh! None of the other shit that's said about me has been true. They're rich, I'm not. <laughs> because Kojima's a fucking cocksucker. <laughs> Thanks for the money, stupid fuck. Why am I toxic? At the end of 2010, DSP would face the most troubling time of his career so far. His AdSense account would be terminated, his main source of income since he had lost his job. I've got bad news. I told you if there was bad news, I would let you know, because um, I'm an honest guy. And to be completely honest, I have nothing to hide. So I don't, I'm not worried about talking this, about this publicly because I've done nothing wrong. Um, I got an email last night that Google has suspended my AdSense account. They're claiming there's been invalid click activity, and uh, I 100% disagree. I know I'm innocent. I have not violated any of their terms and conditions, and I appealed the decision. Um, but what this effectively means is, as of right now, I'm pretty much unemployed again. It would be suspected that this click activity would come from DSP asking his viewers to click on ads. I hope to entertain you in the future. Please go to my partner channel, The King of Hate HD, and click on the ads that show up on the videos there because hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, that actually starts giving me some, some money back for what I'm doing. This channel is The King of Hate HD, and basically how much you guys participate with this channel, if you know what I mean. Uh, I'm not allowed to come out and just say, uh, you know, how you can do that, but anyone who's accustomed to YouTube and how the partner channels work, I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. Due to his inability to make income on YouTube now since his AdSense account has been terminated, Blip TV would partner with DSP and be a new home for his content. This partnership would be short-lived as Blip TV would terminate their partnership after a month on their platform. This is because people would alert Blip TV of DSP's edgier content, specifically his Dead Space playthrough. This is what happens when you let the Jews do whatever they want. <laughs> You've let the Jews overrun space, and now look at this. Their greed has had the artifact turn everyone into necromorphs. So now I, the last remaining Nazi, must exterminate them. Left with little options, DSP would have to partner with Machinima, a network where he would use their AdSense accounts and he would be paid based on the amount of views he received. This resolved any potential financial crisis DSP would have faced if he was unable to get more income from his YouTube career. In 2011, the United States government would introduce bills that would be anti-internet if they were implemented into law. DSP would use his platform to make videos on this topic and introduce people to it to hopefully bring attention to it and stop this bill from passing. The major problem with the bill was that what it seeked to do was make a criminal penalty for the supposed streaming of this content a felony, okay? Previously, you could be sick, sought for damages. Let's say, for example, if someone uploaded the entire Green Lantern movie to the DSP would make a follow-up video on another bill that was anti-internet, and he would receive positive reactions and support for both videos as the internet was united against these bills. These videos would help propel his YouTube channel and bring more attention to him. During this time, DSP was liked enough and popular enough that fans would do remixes and montages of his gameplay. I am fucking Sonic. With his rising popularity, DSP would branch out into other types of videos, such as Ask the King, where he would answer video questions, and John Rambo would appear more and more often in his videos, still being a fan favorite amongst viewers. DSP would introduce another type of video where he would review other types of products besides video games. DSP tries it. DSP Tries It would be in-depth reviews of food, gaming accessories, and a variety of other products. One notable DSP Tries It that would perplex viewers would be the time he would review a body wash and film himself showering and using it. All uh, particles which you use in your body shower to uh, clean your, your body. Let's see what happens here. All right, how about the balls, huh? That's a hard meal. I wash on my body. No, really, it hurts, but it scrapes the dead skin off of your body, so it actually feels pretty good. So, what do I think of the axe detailer? Groovy. 
DSP would have a fan site called the King of Hate Forums, where he would receive positive comments from fans, but to his dismay, he would also receive negative comments, specifically about how he's tricking kids into giving him money and how he's attempting to form a cult. As time went on and his popularity grew, longtime fans would have criticisms against DSP's commentary and haters would arrive. Give me a kiss goodbye, baby. I'll bet if I kissed you, you taste like a wild beast. Oh, why don't you taste my wild beast then? Um, 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 um. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Oh. Oh. USP's fans would criticize his sexual focus commentary, especially when it's interrupting cutscenes. While the ESP fans would criticize his commentary, newly arriving viewers would soon discover DSP's sense of humor. I hope he's black. Cause you know when he's black, there's gonna be trouble. What the hell? What they say, rashness brings success to few. In China, they say, Chiki Chang Wang Charlie Chan Chika Chaka Chaka Cha. The epic adventures of Ding Dong Wong. No, you killed Ding Dong. How dare you kill Ding Dong Wong? <laughs> Hello. Come, look. I fixed you up. Oh, thank you. Hello. Please give me good outfit for undercover. I. Look where they after me. Maybe the tacos. Where's the burritos? <laughs> I'll, I'll take the fire sauce, please. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with this game? It's mad racist. Yeah, you know, apparently they're all fucking racist Spanish people. DSP would receive criticisms for his bad gameplay and his habit of blaming the game, especially lag. Are you shitting me? I was supposed to know to go through there. Oh my god. Where am I going? Oh, what the hell is this lag coming from? The lag out of nowhere, so you could see it. You could see the visible lag. Despite all of this, the attention around DSP remained mostly positive, with the haters being in the minority. That would soon change with the introduction of a new character in DSP's story. DSP would introduce his girlfriend, Leanna, also known as Panda Lee as her online tag. This would be met with immediate controversy due to her age gap, DSP being 29 and Leanna being only 18. There would be allegations that DSP began dating Panda Lee prior to her turning 18, but DSP would deny all this. Fans would choose to believe Phil, but fans would also hate Panda Lee for other reasons. They disliked her commentary and found it obnoxious and ruined the dynamic Phil had with his friends and on his own. Oh my god. You have to unlock them by buying them. It says right next to them how much they cost. And if you press X, you I buy know! Them. I am aware of that! <laughs> I have enough experience, but it still says they're locked. Damn! <sighs> Listen when I talk to you, Jesus! Did you press X? Or press play? Yes, I press X! <laughs> We're talking, not, we're playing! This is not my first video game. All right. This is more Resident Evil than all you guys. That's got. it. Everyone press start. <laughs> <laughs> No more talking, Let's press the start playing. before I kill you all. Jesus, press it! Let's just uh, press a push button. Start. I don't know. <laughs> what the fuck's going on? Probably a better gamer than half of you. You probably can't even ready up. Darkside Phil would make racist jokes and pass it off as his sense of humor, but Panda Lee would make blatantly racist statements. Okay, so a word to a wa to the wise: Do not fucking get an apartment. Like, ever. Just don't. I don't care what neighborhood you live in. It can be as white as anything. Don't fucking get an apartment. Because you know why? You know why it's a white neighborhood? Because the white people live in the houses around it. They do. I swear to God. I'm not joking. This isn't even being racist. I think I'm like... Wait, never mind. There is one white couple on the first floor. White people in this particular apartment complex I live in are a vast minority. Yep, I called the police. You know why? Because three buildings away, I had all these windows and doors closed, but I could hear this Latin CD perfectly that if I knew Spanish enough, I could probably translate it for you. Pandalee would criticize her viewers as lazy for not signing up and voting on polls for her content as she was attempting to start up a gaming channel as well. Well, based on comments, but I don't know if I'm going to play it again because the views weren't as great as I was expecting. So I might just can discontinue both. I have a poll for both of the threads about the movie. I, I don't understand it, Yara. I don't, I don't know. If someone has in the comments a legitimate reason to not join, 
then I'd like to hear it, but if it's something stupid like, eh, I'm lazy, I don't want to register, why should I have to register? Because that's a stupid reason. <laughs> Sorry. I want to hear a legitimate reason why nobody's joining. But anyway, I need some freaking chocolate. I need some chocolate. I can't cope with people being stupid lately. I have an intolerance for stupid lately. And for laziness. My god. It's the internet, people! Where everything is a few mouse and button clicks away and we're still lazy! God damn, we have no hope. On a humorous note, DSP felt the need he needed to make an annotation on his Valentine's video to clarify Panda Lee is not Asian. That is all. In 2012, Panda Lee would have to stay at DSP's condo longer than intended due to a hurricane taking down public transportation. Instead of delaying a playthrough, DSP would start an Assassin's Creed 3 playthrough with Panda Lee's commentary. Fans would react negatively to this playthrough and its commentary, and this would be the last straw for Phil. Here's the thing, this is what so many people don't seem to understand. I got so many just ridiculously insulting, disgusting messages from idiotic, sexist, morons, and no, not everyone's sexist, but some of people were, saying, we don't like Pandalee or her commentary. Don't do these games. So let me get this straight. In a choice between having an Assassin's Creed 3 playthrough, having WWE 13 Attitude Era playthrough, with Pandalee commentary and mine, or n not ever doing the games ever, you would choose not ever doing the games ever. Well, guess what? You're a fucking idiot if that's what you said you sent me comments like that and anyone who ever even took their time out to leave a negative comment or a thumbs down on the videos where she did commentary to say i don't like her commentary you are an idiot you actually are i just want and i understand that this is going to be some of my fans okay i fully understand that you need to understand if you did that you are an idiot okay you are actually dumb and I don't know how else to plainly say it. I'm not trying to insult you. I'm trying to actually explain to you how stupid you are so that you'll realize it. Another another really idiotic thing that some people said, Oh no, so when if Phil and Pantalee ever move in together, this is it. The end of all playthroughs because it's going to be all co-op co commentary between her and him. Are you fucking stupid? If you left that comment, you are stupid. You are. And I don't care if right now hundreds of people who are stupid and left these insulting comments on my videos never watch my videos again. I don't. Because this, this is misconception that between these people who are so entitled and so fucking bratish and spoiled that they actually think that I have to do what they tell me because I make my money off of YouTube. Guess what, fuckheads? I'm going to tell you right now. Since day one when I put something on YouTube, I put it up the way I wanted to do it. I'm an individual. I am not going to be basically blackmailed and bullied by people saying, well, we're just going to leave and never watch your videos again if you don't do exactly what we tell you to do in every instance. That's not me. No one fucking pushes me around, threatens me, or tells me what to do in that manner. Nobody. So if you're an entitled little shit and you think that I care, you're wrong. Get the fuck out of my channel. Seriously, I don't want you watching my content. You don't deserve to watch the quality of content that I put out, okay? Now, if you're an intelligent person, I hope you're not taking this the right way, at the wrong way, because there are lots of fans. In fact, the majority of my fans are intelligent humans who either watch the videos, or if they don't like what they're watching, they just leave, okay? But unfortunately, there are these group of people on the internet who just feel they're so entitled, they're so over-important, they have these over-inflated egos in themselves. If I don't like something, I have to voice it. I have to go say negative things on a video. And then it just ends up becoming overblown, and then you see what happened on the Assassin's Creed videos. It became a giant comment war between people defending Pandalee and myself and people shitting on Pandalee and myself and saying all kinds of ridiculous things about me that I don't care what the, the, what the fans want. You people are idiots. And I, that's where I'm drawing the line. I'm not going to insult you anymore, but that's the bottom line. So if you're that stupid, I don't watch out my videos. I blocked a shit ton of people. I'm still blocking a shit ton of people who are, who are saying shit about this. It's a dead issue in my opinion, because as of right now, Panda Lee is home. Due to Phil's uploading style, fans may have never seen the message he spoke about about Panda Lee's commentary, skipping straight to part 3 of the series. One fan that tried to caution DSP about Panda Lee was Evil AJ 2010, but Phil would subsequently block him after negative comments. 
Despite his outburst, DSP would consider 2012 being the peak of his career. He would consistently get views on his videos, begin a podcast called Hate Life, and accept callers so he could have fan interactions. He would also do tours of his condo, introducing fans to his home life, and also revealing how much money he's been spending on various products such as gaming statues. DSP would also attend conventions with John Rambo, one notable one being MAGFest. At MAGFest, he would announce the return of Project 7. Project 7 was initially a skit-based series that DSP did back in 2010 on his own. Fans enjoyed it, but it ended after a couple episodes. Now Project 7 is returning as a series with John Rambo and Howard, a friend of DSP, and some of Howard's friends behind the scenes doing editing and special effects. Behind the scenes, there's a lot of time and effort put into this iteration of Project 7, especially from Howard's friends doing the editing and special effects. DSP fans would love this series, and specifically they would love John Rambo, making it known in the comments section that he was the fan favorite of the series. But Darkseid Phil did not feel like he was receiving enough credit from fans regarding his contributions behind the scenes for Project 7 and his contributions to the John Rambo character. DSP wanted it to be known that he contributed to the character and it was a group effort, not just John Rambo. One thing I would like to say, which really pisses me off, and this is not me trying to badmouth John Rambo in any way, but in Project 7, this series so far, we it, John Rambo's character in the series gets a lot of the funny parts. He's supposed to be like the deadpan comic that all of a sudden does crazy shit or does silly stuff, and it comes out really funny. And I want to let everyone know that we've been seeing comments on the videos that are kind of stupid, uninformed, and disheartening. Things like, oh, DSP sucks and Howard sucks in this series. It's all about John Rambo. John Rambo, John Rambo. You know, and that's true. A lot of the funny stuff was given to John Rambo. But here's the deal. We all write the episode. Just last week, myself, Howard, and John Rambo got together here in my condo, and we all collectively together put our heads together and wrote all of episode four of Project 7. Okay? It's a group effort and it evolves over time. In fact, a lot of the funniest stuff kind of just becomes improv, stuff that we didn't, there's a scene in episode three that you're going to see, you're going to piss your fucking pants laughing when you watch it, I shit you not, and you're going to know what scene it is when you see it, and it was completely improv by Howard, by OJ, by a couple different people on the fucking spot. So for people to say, oh, this one person is completely the funniest person. You're a complete fucking idiot. You don't understand the creative process of how this stuff comes together. The fact that we all put our heads together and, and write it. It's, this, it's actually insulting for you to say one particular person is the best person in the series when we all write the series. Case in point, in this teaser trailer, there's a funny scene featuring John Rambo, and everyone says it's the best part of the trailer. And I even saw a comment saying, wow, this is, this is Rambo's the funniest thing. Guess what? I wrote that scene. It was my idea to put that scene in there. I have no problem that it was John Rambo acting it out. In fact, for a lot of the Project 7 series, I've kind of been on the back burner. I've been the character that drives the story, meaning, uh-oh, I'm kidnapped. Uh-oh, now I'm emotional because I've lost my gaming powers. Uh-oh. You know, I'm kind of a tool to get the story moving, but I haven't really been at the forefront. I haven't been the leader of the guys or anything like that as of yet. That will change in future episodes, as you're going to see, but for now... I'm doing the role that I need to do in these episodes. I don't need to be absolutely fucking laugh out loud hilarious. John Rambo's had lots of opportunities to be laugh out loud hilarious so far, and so he comes across as maybe the funniest character. It's a difference between, between saying John Rambo is the funniest character in this series versus, oh, John Rambo's the only good thing about this series. Because then you have no idea how the series works, how creative process works, and you're insulting everyone else who works on the fucking episodes. So shut your fucking mouths or get blocked. That simple. Project 7 would abruptly end after only a few episodes. DSP would find out bigger YouTubers were making gaming content and having their ads appear on his videos. He would go on a rant specifically about Tobuscus, but would also make general comments about big YouTubers trying to be gamers. And the thing that really annoys me is when you have someone who you know they're already making giant sums of money, and you really know that they could just focus in on what they're doing and become better at it, but instead of that, they take the easy way out. They decide they're going to branch off into something that's really easy for them because it's popular, it's hip at the time, they know that it's the thing that all the kids are watching. And in particular, what I'm addressing is people who already have existing YouTube channels for things like daily vlogs, uh, you know, their particular video series that are popular, and then they decide one day, oh, gee, I think I'm just going to make a gaming channel over here. And, you know, I'm going to play video games. And it really annoys me because there are people out there like me. Like, my primary living is off of this, off of 
doing this. I'm true to myself, and I do what I enjoy, but I also do what I feel I'm the best at and what you enjoy the most. There are people out there who literally said, well, I have a really popular main YouTube channel. Well, guess what? Um, I'd like more money for no effort, so I'm going to make a gaming channel. And so they just open a gaming channel, and they start playing, of course, some of the most popular games of the time. And you can tell when you watch these channels that there's little to no effort that goes into them. It's not like me where you're, you're playing the game and doing improv commentary or anything like that. No. They were direct capture the video footage like everyone else. They dub their voice over it after the fact to the point where it's like, it's not entertaining at all. Okay? It's horrible. It's scripted. It's unoriginal. It's unfunny. And no, by no means am I saying that these people aren't good at what they do primarily. If they stayed on their main YouTube channels, I think that a lot of them do entertaining stuff. But it's when you decide that one day when you realize you're only in it for the money and that's it, time to make free money, let's do it, let's open a gaming channel because it's the most popular thing, and all of a sudden your major fan base from your main channel comes over to your gaming channel and everyone watches it because, you know, they're your, already your hardcore dedicated fans, even though your videos suck, you're not funny, and you're not good at gaming, okay? I know people are going to say, Phil, you're hypocritical because you're not great at gaming. I never said I was great at gaming. I never, ever touted that, you know, no, oh, I'm a master level. The only game that I admittedly said I think I'm pretty good at is Street Fighter. Everything else, eh, I'm just an average guy. And over the past As YouTube game more competition in the gaming scene, direct capture would become a standard practice for gaming videos. DSP fans would criticize his method of recruiting a screen with a camera, and DSP would respond, explaining why he thinks it's better, and that he may consider going through direct capture eventually, but he prefers using a camera. One last thing, a lot of people say, Phil, you have no excuse, why don't you do direct capture? It would actually be easier than your current setup right now. And to which I respond, it's this simple. I want you to look at my setup. You see the size of my TV? You see the nice subwoofer surround sound speakers I have here behind me? The surround sound speakers, see them? You see that? Most people who do direct capture, here's what they do. Here's their computer. They walk up to their computer and their tiny little fucking monitor, and they sit here and they grab a headset. Here's my headset for my computer. And they put their headset on their ears, and they're playing on a controller here in front of a small monitor, talking into a headset to get their commentary and having the audio of the game go through the headset. That's not gaming to me, okay? Gaming to me is sitting in your living room, here on your nice couch, relaxing, you got a nice drink in front of you, you're ready, you sit down, you got your surround sound pumping, that's how these games are meant to be experienced. Why do you think that all video games now have 5.1 surround sound? So if you can experience it like that, that's how you should experience it. For me to have to do direct capture, I would have to run that headset across my living room, which by the way doesn't even fucking reach from my computer to here. I would have to do commentary through it and I would have to have the audio of the game play through the headphones instead of my surround sound because if I did use my surround sound and the headphones, the microphone would pick up the audio from the system and it would echo. So you'd be hearing double game audio, which you don't want to hear. So for now, direct capture is out of the picture, but if things go well this year, which I'm hoping they do even with all the negative things that have happened to me, uh, regarding, you know, contract renegotiations and stuff. If things turn around and if things go well this year, by the end of this year I will be looking seriously for a place to move where I can have an office and I can do these things more seriously. Uh, and more pro I know people say professionally. I'm sorry, but the way I do it is professional. It's actually difficult to do it the way I do it with the adjustments and the things on the fly. And I do it to try to give you the best commentary and, you know, the, the most videos per day. And, uh... And it's worked. It's worked since I started on YouTube. And, you know, I, I understand that there has to be change and that things need to be adapted. And that's why I am willing in the future to look into direct capture when I get a better place. But that has to happen first, okay? DSP would tweet that he received content ID claims on his videos. He would dispute these but receive a strike on one of the videos. He would go on to make a video discussing how his gaming playthroughs are working out and protected under fair use. This video is part of a video game playthrough covered and protected under fair use law as a transformative work. If this really is Sega who is claiming this, I'm telling you right now, I'm instructing you, take me to court. Leave your nonsense off YouTube. If you have a problem with people using your video game footage in a let's play atmosphere, take me to court. Because I'm not taking down any of my videos, 
I'm going to fucking stand my ground for all gamers, and I believe that Let's Plays are transformative work, and I'm not going to let you push me around. So I told him, take me to court. I'm done with this. I've been doing this now since 2008. I'm not going to put up with this corporate bullshit anymore. And you know what? I hope they do take me to court, because at this point, I'm done with this. We need a legal precedent to be set to state that we are gamers and we are protected and that we are not going to be persecuted by YouTube's shitty automated system, by any Joe Schmo fucking game publisher who tries to double and triple dip. I paid my $60. I bought the license to play your game. My gameplay is my original content, not yours. Go fuck yourself, period. Just think about how preposterous this is. So an artist goes out and buys paint and a paintbrush. They go home. They paint a beautiful portrait with the paint and the paintbrush, right? They go and they, they go to sell that. But guess what happens? When they go to sell it, someone contacts them and says, sorry, you don't own that because you used our paint to make that art. That means that that's our property. Sorry. You know, like, what? Would you just think about that? Would you say that's the same? That game, this game, binary domain, without me pressing start, without me using the buttons, without me using the joysticks to control it, without me giving my creative content, my, my, my verbal input with my commentary, this video, which is a work of art, would not exist. It's every bit as much mine, if not more so, than it is for Sega. I paid Sega. They're $60. I paid them their fee to utilize the ingredients to make my work of art. To say that the paint company could claim something on a piece of, on a portrait is as preposterous as saying that the company who gave me the tool to make this video owns this video. It's bullshit and it needs to stop. DSP would begin doing giveaways where he would trade in the game disc to get cash or credit back, then give away the game case to a winning fan offering to autograph it. You're going to see... The game's gone because I traded it in years ago, but it does have the second bonus disc that probably has the behind-the-scenes content and stuff like that, okay? And then also has this really neat art book. Again, keep in mind, it's a nice souvenir. It's not a game. It's a nice souvenir that you can maybe have, and if you want me to autograph it, you want me to autograph it across the front, maybe I'll, I'll see if I can find the, a metallic marker. I had them at one point, but I think it broke, actually. But I could sign on the inside, you know what I mean? I could find somewhere that it makes sense for me to sign it, if you want me to, or if you don't want me to ruin it, I can have business cards, I could sign those. If you want my autograph, if you don't, it's fine, but I'm just saying. So this is what we're giving away for week one. At the end of 2012, Machinima would renegotiate Darkside Phil's contract, resulting in less income from effective 2013. He would make a video at the beginning of 2013 to address his fans to assure them that he was not broke, he's been saving all his money, and that the BMW that he bought is effectively saving him money in the long run. The good news is this, okay? I am an intelligent person. I am a finance major. I went to school for finance. I knew day one when I started making money off of YouTube that I was going to bank it. I was not going to go out there and invest in things that I couldn't get money out of. I wasn't going to go out there and sp overspend, as you've seen. Even though I told you for the past two years financially I've been doing pretty well for myself, I'm still here in the condo. I didn't go out and buy a, a, a super over expensive house and... I didn't go out and buy a sports car. Yes, I am driving a BMW, but it's actually a lot more economical than people really think. And it's also full service, so I actually, in the long run, I'm probably going to be paying if the same, if not less, than what I paid for my previous car, which was a piece of shit. And I had to constantly have it in the shop. I basically paid for that car three times over. He would go on to say he would not accept fan donations because he would rather get a job than beg from his fans. He would only beg if he was destitute and couldn't find a job. I basically have lived within my means, you know what I mean? You don't see me here with super expensive clothes on or anything, and you don't see me wearing jewelry and shit. You know, I'm smart. I've banked my money. So regardless of what happens in this next year, I'm still okay. So I just want everyone to understand that. This, is not, this video is not an attempt for me to try to beg people for money and ask for donations or do a Kickstarter. And there's going to be people who are going to say that kind of stuff, and you have to really think about the history of the person who you're watching when people say nasty shit because have I ever in the history of me being on YouTube begged people for donations, begged for money, begged for anything? That's not the kind of person I am and actually since I, I, I started making money on YouTube, I actually literally said to everyone I am not accepting 
monetary donations because there were people who were attempting to send me money and stuff because previously when I wasn't making money off of this, I was accepting that to, for the cost of buying games and stuff because this was my hobby. But since it became my occupation, I said, no, everything is a tax write-off. I don't need money. You know, I don't want that. That's ridiculous that I would have people be sending me money and stuff. And I'm still not asking for that. And I would actually morally feel bad if that were the case, if I were to have to do stuff like that. And I never, I really hope that I never will, okay? I, I, the, only re, I, the only reason I can really see myself doing that is if I was so destitute and I couldn't find a job outside of, you know, YouTube, which I really, I'm hoping that that wouldn't never come to that, okay? I don't want it to go away. I don't give a fuck if I make a dollar or if I make a million dollars, okay? I just want to keep doing this. And for people to accuse me of being a money grubber is ridiculous. There are YouTubers right now, gaming YouTubers, who are taking big paychecks to play games that they don't like, they suck at, and they never would have played. There are big time companies like EA who are paying people to play certain games, but you're going to accuse me of caring about a, a, you know views and a paycheck. That's ridiculous. In an attempt to bring back all viewers and repair his reputation, he would unblock everyone he's blocked, hopefully to bring them back to watch his videos and interact in the comments. As of two days ago, anyone who's ever been blocked on DSP Gaming has been unblocked. That's right. This is kind of an amnesty, meaning I'm, I'm drawing a line, I'm saying, even Steven, I recognize that maybe I overstepped my reasonable bounds in the past two years when it came to comments on YouTube. And uh, I'm kind of trying to say, all right, well, let's let bygones be bygones. Clean slate. Everyone is back and allowed to comment. Now, I need you to understand that this means that, of course, there's going to be a lot of assholes who used to have trolling account already. There was the guy impersonating me, DSP Gaming, with two eyes. And he's saying ridiculous shit like, oh, give me money because I'm broke. And I mean donations and blah, 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 trying to be me and trying to make me look bad. There are still going to be people like that who are going to get blocked. But I am here to announce that effective immediately, I am no longer actively policing the comments on any of my channels. I don't feel that it's a, worth, a worthwhile investment in time. Um, I feel that too many people have been offended by the fact that I've done it. And at this point in time, if it's going to have a massive negative effect on things, then I don't think it's worth it, okay? DSP would say he would have a new attitude in this new year, but he didn't want to become like any other YouTuber who's always worried about views. Here's what's, what's coming up. Here's what's going to change um, regarding all my stuff. And I know it's going to be a shock to some people. It's an attitude change, really, in a lot of ways. Um, I think that a lot of people view me as an opinionated person, and they like that, but a lot of pe people feel me as an... I'm, I'm offensive. I, I don't do things constructively the first time around. And I kind of disagree with that because there's always a reason behind things that I do. Um, and I think that it's a good thing to be an opinionated person. And in a lot of ways, I think that too many people are so worried about views and so worried about their fans and not offending people. They want to be the most fucking cookie cutter PG generic piece of shit on YouTube that they don't want to say their opinions. And I just want to tell everyone I'm never going to change in that regard. I'm a, I am an opinionated person and I'm not a pussy and I'm going to say what I feel when I feel it, okay? Who go on to say how he's worried about views and he needs his fans to help him? This past week was a bust for me. Here was a week when I was like, wow, new attitude, it's a new year, I'm going to put out less uploads a day, I'm going to focus more on quality, and I really was, was, was feeling great, and immediately, <laughs> views in the toilet. And what I'm basically trying to say is the third change here is that I can't do that anymore. I can't have weeks like this week. This is literally going to kill me and my career on YouTube if I continue to have shitty weeks like this. So, a new change that I'm making is a new series that I'm starting. It's called Retro Replays. What I really need from you, if you're a viewer, if you're a fan, if you like my content and you really want me to continue to make videos on YouTube, I just need you to watch. I need you to have a positive attitude because I tell you, I, I'm attacking this with a positive attitude. That's why I'm making positive changes like no more censorship of comments and retro replay. Despite his pleas for positivity, 2013 would be DSP's most negative year of his YouTube career.
Evil AJ 2010 would return from his banishment and upload a video called This Is How You Don't Play in February. It would be a montage of clips of DSP at his worst moments during a game. It would focus on moments where DSP was performing poorly at the game or moments where fans found DSP's commentary obnoxious. Evil AJ would interlace images of comments from that playthrough that DSP would consider negative. Uh. What? I didn't equip a chaff grenade! What the fuck? I went right to the gun and let go and then equipped a chaff grenade. Just kill me. Just kill me. How stupid. Yes, chaff grenade. That's what I wanted. DSP seemed to be unaware of Evil AJ's upload, or he simply ignored it to avoid bringing attention to it. Either way, DSP seemed to be focusing on his channel, switching to direct capture, and beginning to live stream on Twitch so he could have an interactive stream with his audience. Despite his reduced income from Machinima and the uncertainty of his financial situation, for his birthday, DSP would attend WrestleMania 29 with John Rambo. In April, Evil AJ would upload another This Is How You Don't Play video and it would quickly go viral. Evil AJ's This Is How You Don't Play videos would quickly surpass the amount of views that DSP was receiving in 2013 on his videos. It would become more and more common for Darkseid Phil to be called Darkseid Fail in the comment section. The popularity of This Is How You Don't Play would force DSP to make a responding video, though he would refer to Evil AJ as two people. Oh. Alright, you know what? I will address this. Why not? Um, you know, this is so stupid. Uh, it's just so everyone knows, over the past month to month and a half, there have been these, I guess, two people, I don't, I have no clue who they are, alright, no, no idea, who, I guess, went back and watched my Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 playthroughs and did, like, montage videos of me failing at the game and then making, like, snide remarks and insulting commentary that I suck at the games, okay? Um, and I guess it's, I don't know if they have fan bases or whatever, again, I know nothing about these people because I don't care about them, but... I guess their fan bases have taken it upon themselves to try to, like, troll me here on Twitch and also on other video series and on, on Twitter. And every once in a while I see the dumbest shit. Like, oh, oh you, you, you really suck at Metal Gear Solid 4. I, I, I thought that I sucked at Metal Gear Solid 3 and then I saw DSP play it. And to me, here's, here's the thing. This is how dumb it is. And this is all I have to say about it because it's a very simple fact. Number one... When I started those playthroughs, if you actually watch them, the first thing that I said in them is, I never played these games before, I actually missed out on the Metal Gear Solid series, and I was playing it now because I wanted to at least experience it, and that I would probably suck at the games. Like, I literally said that as a warning, a, a preemptive thing before the playthrough start. what do they call that? Uh, the, uh, discre discretion advised or whatever. I, I said that before the playthroughs. So anyone who watched part one and then went on and got upset or angry that I played the games poorly is a fucking idiot. So let me get this. I did playthroughs of these games and you took the time to watch the playthrough and give me money for it. Because whether or not you watched the ad that's not what I get credit for. I get credit on my machinima contract based off of views, okay? So you watched the whole playthrough, you paid me for it, then you made a video to make fun of me and be very malicious in the way that you did it. It wasn't like fun loving. It was pretty malicious and nasty the way that these guys made these videos. And then you make it public and then all of a sudden you, you tell your fan base to make fun of me or whatever. There's one small problem with this. I played those games over a fucking year ago, you stupid morons. Like, how slow can you be? I mean, it's not like all of a sudden someone said, Oh, look, Phil's Metal Gear Solid 2 playthrough is a hot topic. I played those games a year ago. Really? Like, dude, I'm, it's not even pertinent anymore. I could see if they took a playthrough I did a month ago in a game that I played really poorly and they want to make fun of me for it. It's been out for forever. So anyone who wanted to fucking do that would have already seen it. So all you've done is lured your fans to my videos to, to watch them to see how bad I am at the game and I got paid for it. So you're the idiots. You're the idiots. <laughs> I just, like, how is this a, 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 lo a loss for me? It makes no fucking sense. I prefaced my playthrough saying I know 
I'm probably going to be terrible. I then proceeded to be terrible, and people think that it's funny to make fun of me? The bottom line is this. These people are the dregs of society, okay? These people are like the bottom of the barrel. They think that because they're good at a certain game, and that because they become a fanboy of that game, that it gives them some kind of a status or some kind of a boost. Their e-dick grows ten sizes that day. Oh, because I'm good at Metal Gear. Oh, I'm so special. It's like, it's the most fucking pointless, worthless thing in life to argue about or to even brag about. Like, what the fuck? It's a video game, you fucking loser. It's a fucking video game. People will continue to ask about this is how you don't play an evil AJ during Ask the King. People were potentially trying to bait DSP into raging and ranting during these question segments. Regardless if it was an intentional attempt to bait Phil into ranting or raging, DSP would answer the question with a 20 minute rant. This would occur two weeks after he addressed it the last time, creating this habit of DSP constantly addressing negativity. During this rant, DSP would say that Evil AJ was both mentally ill and just jealous of his success. He would also state what Evil AJ is doing is illegal stealing his content. DSP would also say that Evil AJ might be a fan of Kojima, the creator of Metal Gear Solid, and that Evil AJ's This Is How You Don't Play is revenge for DSP insulting Kojima. So, when it comes to this video, I was aware of it, but I didn't know what it was. Um, at first, I, I mean, ba basically it's theft, because this guy blatantly downloaded my videos without my consent, made a montage of gameplay, which is illegal. You can't just download someone's video from YouTube and make your own montage without their permission. And then he was making fun of me during it. And it wasn't like, okay, let's let's jab a poke here and there at Phil. It was malicious. The video was malicious. It's basically this guy really just saying that I'm a piece of shit. I'm worthless. I don't deserve to be a gamer. I shouldn't be making any money or get any views on YouTube or Twitch. It's a really malicious video. You can tell there's negative intent there. It's not something that's meant to be funny. And the fact that this guy made a two and a half hour montage shows that number one he obviously didn't enjoy the playthrough so why he watched the entire Metal Gear Solid 2 playthrough I have no idea but then he took the time to actively download these videos illegally and make a montage okay a two and a half hour montage okay who in their right mind would ever do that and I'm being serious here like if you're mentally stable who would force themselves to watch an 8 plus hour playthrough of something you don't like, then download all the videos to make a two and a half hour hate montage? Who would do that? Like, you have to be mentally ill. And I'm being serious. This person, if you're watching this, you need help. You need to go check yourself in. Seriously, like, you need to have the white coats come get you because you have something wrong with you. A normal person would not fucking do that. You are mentally unstable and mentally ill, okay? And that's the bottom line. Now, <clears throat> I want you to think about this. Why would someone make a video like that? Completely malicious intent. Why would someone, I don't like this person, I don't like the content that they put out, but I'm going to force myself to watch an eight-hour playthrough. I'm going to make a two-and-a-half-hour montage. What could be the two reasons? There are two underlying reasons why he would have made this, this video. Number one, he's just insanely jealous of me. He's insanely jealous that here on YouTube or, and, and Twitch, I'm now successful, I'm making a living doing it, he's insanely jealous because maybe he's trying to do it and he can't, and so I gotta make fun of the guy, and I gotta hate on the guy who's made it because I have. And that's, I can understand that. I'm not saying that's what happened, I'm saying that's a possibility. I don't know anything about this guy. So these are hypothetical situations, okay? The other is that the guy is one of these gamers, like I mentioned, who play the games to feel accomplishment. And so for him, maybe Metal Gear is one of his biggest, famous, most most loved, beloved series. And he really feels that Kojima is a, a guy who's made a masterpieces. And his directing of the game was amazing. And that this game is like one of the best games ever made. And maybe he literally got insulted to see me play the game as poorly as I did. That's just sick. It really is disturbing. And I'm actually afraid that, of this guy, that he's like a nut job. And that if I continue to play games on YouTube, he's going to show up here one night and try to murder me. Now, the only thing that I can say in this guy's defense is that maybe he was so mad because a lot of the times during the playthrough, I remember particularly, I said, damn it, Kojima, couldn't you have made this easier? Couldn't you have explained how to do this? Couldn't you have done that? And I did blame the game developer. That is something that I frequently do in my playthroughs. And sometimes it's, it's legitimate rage if it is a big problem, if it's something that I feel they could have really done better in the game. But sometimes it's just for comedic effect. No, I don't hate Hideo Kojima.
These people go on to say that this is all he has to say on the topic of evil AJ and this is how you don't play and that he's just going to ignore all the haters. And that's all I have to say on the subject. I'm sure I'm going to come up against massive hate. I'm sure there's going to be massive haters. There always have been in the past. There always will be in the future. And the bottom line is not to focus on it. DSP will go on to explain that when he makes a racist joke, it does not hurt anyone. So his jokes are not real racism. Um, it's pretty easy to make the distinction. And a lot of people say, oh, there's a fine line, it's a gray area. It's not. It's this simple. It's when what you're doing, your actions, actually have a, a negative effect on the person. Okay? So, if I'm making a silly joke about a racist stereotype or whatever during a playthrough, is that really hurting a particular person? Is that really hurting that race? Let's really think about it. No, not really. But... If I were a person who was running my own business and I refuse to interview candidates based completely off of their race, I refuse to pay my employees equally because of their race, that's fucked up. That is racism, okay? It's very easy. And I know, again, there's some people who like to be too bitchy about it. Oh, he made a racist joke. That's so insensitive. But no one got hurt. The difference is when people start getting hurt, that's when it's fucked up, and you have to draw the line. Even with this negativity coming from This Is How You Don't Play, DSP held on to a strong fan base and still had legitimacy within the gaming community, still being invited to gaming conventions and panels. DSP intended Twitch to be a way to interact with his fans and build up a community, but it would backfire as he would have to face negative comments while live streaming. Normally, when addressing criticism or negative comments, DSP would do a pre recruited rant video and upload it to his channel, having the option to delete it or just do another take. But while live streaming, he did not have this option. Haters and fans would see his raw reactions to negative comments. There would be an infamous moment in DSP's live stream of Kingdom Hearts where Panda Lee would go into chat, egging on chat, calling them fanboys, trying to get chat to rage at her so she could moisturize her body in their sadness and rage. DSP viewers would not react kindly to Panda Lee's comments and begin insulting and arguing with her, ignoring the live stream that was happening at the time. DSP would realize what was happening in chat, lock it down to sub-only mode, and begin insulting viewers. Alright, and now I'm going to tell everyone in the chat I had enough of your bullshit tonight. I see everyone arguing with my girlfriend instead of talking about the game, and I've had enough. So we're going to turn it in sub-only mode, and now none of you can fucking talk. Since you can't act your age or act mature, and you all want to argue with my girlfriend, now you can just have no chat. How about that? So, fuck all of you who are acting immature. This is what you get now. We're putting it in the sub-only mode. Fucking idiots. I'm here trying to play a fucking game. It's hard to concentrate when a bunch of little immature shits get into a fucking argument with my girlfriend. Fuck you. There you go. Subscriber-only mode. No fucking chat. That's what you fucking get. Piss me the fuck off. There. Guess what? Now there's no more arguments. No more. Dumb fucks. Now we can all concentrate on the game, which is what you should have been concentrating on to fucking begin with. Immature assholes. Jesus. If I could slap you through the fucking internet, I would. Alright, now let's get back to fucking business. What we're all here for. Jeez. Ex-fans of DSP would start making videos explaining why they were not fans of Dirk Phil anymore. These former fans would send these videos to Dirk Phil himself, Presumably in an attempt to provide constructive feedback so Dirk Side Phil could make these changes and bring back X fans, or as an attempt to bait a live reaction from them, or bait a rant from a pre-recorded video. Alright, and goodbye to the Dragon Slayer, who unfortunately former, formerly used to be a fan. All of a sudden today out of thin air, out of nowhere, sends me two videos that were hater videos. One of them is his. He says, oh, my video is not a hater video. I click on it. And everything in the description, this is why I don't like Phil anymore. Here, watch watch this guy's videos who challenged Phil the Street Fighter and called him a pedophile because he knows what he's talking about. And all that. Like, you know what? Enough. And now he's in the chat derailing it. There's a rule. You can't talk about this shit. Bye. Go fucking go with your little jerk off fan club and go jerk each other off in a circle like you all like to do. It's obvious that's what you want. <laughs> You want to feel like part of this group of people who hate on me and you feel so good. Oh, be your own community of, of negativity and filth. Go ahead. Go jerk each other off and go away. That's not what the stream is about, you dumbass. What an idiot. And the f sad part is I used to talk to this guy on Twitter all the time. And, I, you know, we used to have you know, intelligent conversations. He used to contribute to stuff. 
And all of a sudden, something in his, the back of his fucking head turns his opinion, convinces him that I'm some kind of an evil person. Yes, that's me. The evil mastermind of the internet. I am here to corrupt you and to be dishonest. That's what I am. I am the evil genius at work here. No, I'm a guy sitting in his living room playing games. You're the fucking loser who has to turn it into something negative. So, goodbye. And good riddance. So you gotta think of it this way. Here's how, where you really gotta think of it, okay? And this is, this is me being real. If you watch someone's content, and you love their content. You think it's entertaining. You think it's fun. Okay? And that's why you watch them. And then all of a sudden, you, you realize that there's a group of people who don't like that person. And you allow yourself to, to separate yourself from the person who's entertained you for years. To go watch a bunch of people who are making all these negative, nasty videos about that person. And you allow yourself to believe some of that stuff. Shame on you, because weren't you there just to enter, be entertained to begin with, right? Right now, there's probably hundreds of people on YouTube making videos about me. Complete bullshit. Oh, I'm a pedophile. Yeah, I met Panda Lee when she was 16. I never even talked to Leanna until she was after she was 18. And it's so dumb, because anyone who's a longtime viewer or fan knows that there were other girls... Who've been in my videos, remember? Remember all those certain gameplay playthroughs where there were girls? Remember when I went to a renaissance fair and there was a girl in the video? And that wasn't Panda Lee. Those were other girls who I'd been dating in the past. But these people will make anything up in order to make me look bad because they think that if I look bad, that they have power over, over me and just in general. Because these people in real life have no fucking power. They sit there and they're miserable little cunts who probably get slapped around all day, slapped around at school, you know, their parents slap them around. So I gotta turn to the internet, and we're gonna do this mass negativity campaign against a guy who just wants to sit on his couch and play games and share it, share that with people. That's fine, because some people are saying, well, even mentioning this, you know, is gonna perpetuate the creation of a new video. You know what? Good. Because that'll just prove that anyone who makes a new video based off of what I'm saying right now is such an immature little idiot. Really, because if you can't listen to reason, if you can't listen and put yourself in the shoes of someone else, then you're immature. And that's really where I feel I've really matured a lot since I've done this on YouTube. You know, when I started, it was all a joke and it wasn't being serious. And I would make friend requests ridicule and rip my fans a new asshole for sending me messages and voice messages. And it was very, very insincere and it was very mean-spirited. And I don't do that kind of stuff anymore because I really feel that since I've started doing this and I've gotten feedback from people, I start putting myself into the shoes of other people and realizing, wow, if you're on the other side of the coin, that would be a pretty nasty thing, you know? So that's the, what these people don't have the ability to do yet. I just, you know, I've recently gained that ability, so, you know, in the last five, six years, and I was very bad at doing it before then. These people don't have that. All they see is from their own self-entitled perspectives. And that's why they feel they're the most important people on the planet. And that's why they feel that they can make a thousand videos about me. And if they do, they've just proven my point. If anyone makes a video about that argument, they've literally proven my point. Word for word. DSP's live reactions and frequent rant video uploads would garner the attention of many haters and trolls from across the internet. They would gain the moniker of Detractor. Detractor would be used as a blanket tomb to describe anyone that would attempt to troll Phil, hate on Phil, or even criticize Phil. These detractors would create memes and small communities focused on making fun of DSP and criticizing all his actions. One such detractor group would be Kojima World Order, their name derived from a joke that DSP had once made based on his perceived hatred of Kojima and a wrestling faction called New World Order. It cemented the meme that DSP hated Kojima now that Kojima was associated with the detractor group. Completely behind cover, die. Yes. Applaud Kojima, everybody. Applaud. Applaud Kojima. It's a great game. Kojima World Order. Well, that's right, because Kojima's a fucking cocksucker. Master level fucking programming. I love Kojima. Kojima, the master. Kojima World Order. The KWO is in effect here. I'm joining the Kojima World Order as of right now. Everything that Kojima has made is godlike, without question.
KWO would parody DSP Tries It and make such videos as DSP Tries It insulting his fans HD remake in reference to the Kingdom Hearts incident. They would incorporate DSP Tries It's jingle into their own intro when making these videos. The following DSP tries it. has been paid for by the Kojima World Order. There would be prevalent memes amongst the detractor community regarding DSP. One meme would be his laugh. They would refer to his laugh as ack 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 and call it a seal laugh due to his habit of clapping while laughing. That's two partners you lost. Your partner died! Ah, 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 Dude, that is the best dead scene ever! The tractors would focus on, on how often DSP would snoot into his mic and make this a meme and make compilations of it. Phil would reveal that this is caused by a post-nasal drip causing him to constantly snoot. The Tractus would make this a defining characteristic of DSP and refer to him as a pig due to the snooting and his perceived greed. These detractive memes would make their way onto DSP's own videos, potentially him being unaware of these memes at the time. Next question is from CJP Act. King? I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, I apologize. The Tractus would also make compilations of DSP insulting viewers and insulting people he played with online. I love the idiots in the fucking chat. All you have to do is block! Yeah, that's why he 360. Because I did block. In the glory and adoration that comes with being Just because you're a fucking idiot who watches streams doesn't mean you know how to play the fucking game, resort. dumbass. <laughs> I love idiots. Here we go again. I can't move. I can't even stand up. I hate this idiot. Come on, man. Do you want to play the fucking game? Sir, just kill me. Here, I'm just going to walk forward. You can just keep shooting my body. Because you're such a good player that this is how you earn your win. So no, no, come on. Keep hitting me. Come on, keep hitting me, asshole. Come on, you fucking idiot. Come on. Keep hitting me. Here, earn your win. Oh, you're so good. I'm gonna let you fucking win so that you can waste your fucking life playing other people. Because I actually like playing fighting games, you fucking idiot. Fuck you, dumb shit. My god, people are still- Here, keep hitting me. Go ahead, hit me again. Come on, finish it. Get your perfect, because this is how you want to win. So go ahead. Go ahead. No, you're the bitch because you don't play a fucking fighting game, you stupid cocksucker. You fucking walk back and shoot bullets. You're a fucking idiot. Your mother probably shat you out, you fucking piece of shit. Learn how to fucking play a game and be an honorable fucking player. Don't spam fucking projectiles, you stupid fucking idiot. So now, you can live in your- as you live in your mom's basement, you can celebrate by eating your whole fucking bag of Doritos and chugging down your fucking Fanta, because you gotta win with Deathstroke. You're so good, because you rock back and shot bullets. Fuck you, you stupid- Even with his financial instability, DSP would take week-long trips to Philadelphia, Chicago, and his gaming statue collection would continue to grow. In August, DSP said he was done addressing all the negativity and detractors, but less than two weeks later, he would upload a video over one hour long ranting about the negativity. And I know that a lot of people have been saying that I've been doing hypocritical things lately. Uh, I, for one, can say 100%, I can understand why you would say that me making this video is kind of hypocritical because I said a few weeks ago that regarding this whole issue of negativity surrounding myself, particularly on YouTube, that I would not address it. I would just completely ignore it and, uh, and we would just push ahead positively. And I've done that. I've done that for the past month or so. DSP found that the message was extremely important to him, so he did not monetize the video once it was uploaded to YouTube. He would go on to address how there's a large number of former fans making videos about him, describing why they don't like DSP anymore, and he would go on to say that they're just joining a bandwagon against him. What I want to address are these people who are coming out and they're saying, well, I used to watch DSP, but then this particular situation happened, and he hasn't legitimately addressed it at all, and because of that, I don't like him anymore, and I want to make a big campaign that everyone should stand up against DSP. He does nothing positive for anyone. He hates his fans, and uh, he use, abuses his fans, and that's it. Let's all do it together. And what's happened right now, literally on YouTube, it's a fad. It's actually become a YouTube fad among people who watch Let's Plays or Playthroughs to basically make these kind of videos. Say, I don't like DSP anymore. He's a dick. Uh, you know. And when you watch them, it's funny because... 
there is a grain of truth in every single one. There's always going to be a grain of truth. There's a reason why someone may become upset with someone, all right? Maybe there is something that I did to piss someone off. And that's all. However, however, it's now gotten to the point that, and I'm not exaggerating here, if you just go to the YouTube search and you type in DSP Gaming or you type in Dark Side Phil, the majority of videos that are going to come up first are people making these hate videos about me. All right, and like I said, it's literally to the point it's a fad now. It's like it's the in thing to do. You used to watch DSP, but now you're, you know, you've gotten a little older, and maybe he did something to maybe annoy you at one point. Make a hate video about it because everyone's doing it, and it's a fad, and everyone's watching these videos. I mean, undoubtedly, people wouldn't <clears throat> wouldn't be jumping on the bandwagon, okay, if there wasn't a reason to do it. And right now, it's actually people are doing it to get popularity and to get views. DSP would go on to address one particular fan that had become a detractor. This fan had helped set up the King of Hate fan forums, sent DSP a custom PC, and even gave him some advice on how to do direct capture when he was first beginning. Phil would realize that the direct capture advice was incorrect and then later found out that the fan intentionally sent him a damaged PC. He would go on to say that people are focusing on the negative aspects of him just to get popularity and views when he's already done so many positive things throughout his YouTube career. I've tried numerous times in my career here on YouTube and Twitch to do things for positive reasons. Do you remember Bill 9 S.978 and the SOPA and PIPA and how I spoke up about those issues? My video got over 600,000 views. That video got the attention of DemandProgress.org. They directly contacted me and used that video to push their agenda to the mainstream. And in fact, after SOPA and PIPA got shot down, DemandProgress.org personally contacted me because they wanted me to be in their book. They're writing a book about how SOPA and PIPA got shut down and my video was such a big part of it. They wanted me to be part of the book. You know what I said? No, because I don't need the credit. The credit was that it got shut down. That's all I care about, all right? So for you to call me cancer when the bottom line is what I did a few years ago saved a lot of people's asses. There's people who were doing video game footage on the internet probably wouldn't have been able to if Sopa and Pippa got, didn't get shot down. Now, not by any means am I saying I'm the only person responsible for it, but I was the, one of the first people to break the issue, and I let 600,000 people across the globe know about it, and they all spoke the fuck up and got it shut down. You think I'm cancer? No. People who make negative montages about people, people who just care about the negativity and try to break people down and twist little facts to try to make your agenda pass so you can get views that's the real disease of the gaming community that's the people who need to shut the fuck up because they're not helping anything yes we will go on to request that his fans make vlogs and montages of the positive aspects of his gaming channel hopefully to overwhelm the negative videos popping up in the youtube algorithm when looking up dsp gaming he would go on to try and make this a movement called Hashtag DS Positive and make it a trend amongst his community. I would like to make a request if I could, all right? And I don't know if anyone's gonna, gonna you know, buy into it, but I get so many messages on a daily basis about positivity. Phil, thank you so much for putting up with all this crap that's going on. I just got one today. Thank you for putting up with all the negativity that's going on. Please continue to make your content. We love what you're doing. We support you. And... Thanks so much. And that's the kind of thing that keeps me going. But the thing is, they send me a PM. They don't make a giant ranting video about it on YouTube. So what happens? You search for Dark Side Phil on YouTube and you see all the stupid rants from people who are out for themselves and aren't not telling the truth about me and my content. Okay? And you see none of the positive stuff. So, so what I would ask from everyone is this. If you are an actual viewer of mine, a fan of mine, Start the positive talk going. Talk to everyone about what you like. Make a vlog about it, you know? Start the, the positivity train going, because that's what we really need. We need to turn this around to the point where we're like, okay, so there's this group of people that hate them, but look at the people who like them too. All right, now I'll watch them and I'll make my own decision, because that's not what's happening right now. As I've said numerous times in this video, people are just going to YouTube, typing Dark Side Phil, and immediately there's 20 hate videos. Wow, this guy must be a real piece of shit. I mean, 20 people here said it. I'm not going to watch his content. Fuck him. And then they go elsewhere, you know? And, uh, you know, again, I tried to ignore it for a month straight now to the point where I couldn't anymore because it was nagging me in the back of my head. I had to speak out about this issue. And also there's just these people who are not my hardcore fans and they're skipping my content. They're saying there's too much negativity associated with Dark Side Phil right now. 
and I don't understand it, but these people are saying he's a dick and he does he mistreats his fans. Well, fuck it. Let's not watch his content. This video would begin the season of rants, where he would constantly address the negativity and attract us through multiple videos throughout the months of September, October, November, and December. He would address the same topics over and over again, repeating himself, making one rant blend into the other rant. For the sake of brevity, I will not be showing each rant individually, but I will take out key moments where he would provide new insight on his perspective. In October, DSP would state that he could take down all the detractor videos if he wanted to because they violated his copyright and trademark of his content, but he didn't because it wasn't worth his time, he didn't care, and he wanted to focus on the positive. I said, Phil, you know, you have, number one, copyright hold on all the videos that you upload to YouTube, and number two, you own the trademark on your name, so technically anyone who even uses a video with your content is violating both copyright and trademark law, why don't you take them down? And the bottom line is this, there's different ways to handle negativity. I absolutely right now can get up and stop my feet and be angry. Oh no, these people are making fun of me. Oh no. And, and so that's it. I'm going to take legal action against them. And I could right now pick up my phone and I could call my lawyer and I could say, that's it. We got to get these motherfuckers put in a hundred copyright claims right now and trademark claims against people on YouTube and get them down and fuck this. And you know, but that's not really the way to go about it. In my opinion. All right. As a person who's been around the block, uh, it seems like when you attack negativity with more negativity, it doesn't work. The best way to attack negativity like this is to focus on the positive. The fact that I still have a following on YouTube and Twitch. Despite the fact of all the bullshit that's out there, I still have people who know who I am as a person, who give me the benefit of the doubt, who watch my content and have fun regardless of the fact that there may be, oh no, there's 40 trolls who came in and thumbs down the video. Who gives a shit? You're still watching the video and enjoying the content, and that's what matters, okay? Bottom line is, I could do that. Right now, I could call my lawyer, and I could have a team of people on it. But the time and effort it would take in versus the, the fact that these people are just going to continue to do it because they see that they got a rise out of me, it's not worth my time. And the bottom line is, that's all it is. People are trying to ride this wave of negativity, not a wave of positivity. It's the, anti the antithesis of that, actually, when you think about it. When I, a couple of years ago, I said, I'm just going to ride this wave of positivity, this this wave of success. These people are waving, or riding the wave of negativity, all right? Because they see it's a fad now, it's popular. And if I address it, and if I do stuff like that, and I do, you know, flagging people, which I could immediately, right now, there's a video that went up today, I could get it taken down like this. I'm not even kidding you, I could. I could call my lawyer and be done. But there's no reason to, because I don't care. I'm not going to be petty little, little, like them, I'm not going to be a petty little person. Oh no, I'm so upset about DSP. No, I'm going to make creative content on a daily basis, push it forward for you, and stay positive, and that's all you can do. In November, DSP would go on another rant describing how he's changed as a person and he's no longer negative, and he would address how people keep getting the king of hate name wrong, people believing that he's the source of hate when in reality people hate him for no reason and he uses that hate to fuel himself. So that's why I find it funny that these idiots are trying to flip it. And again, when you look at the black and right, when you look at the facts, you know that it's bullshit. No, I'm not a scamming my fans. I'm not hugely mean-spirited to my fans. You know, when do I do this? When do I just sit and chat and I put my feet up like this and I say, let's make fun of people. Oh, look, this guy's name is stupid. B b ban him. Oh, look, this guy I don't really like. Ban him. Oh, this guy's a fucking asshole. Ban You know, when do I do this? I don't. I'm focusing on putting out uh, uh, Ask the King answering your questions. If I didn't care about the fans, why would I even do Ask the King? You know what I mean? So it's just pre preposterous the shit that people say just to get noticed, just to get views, and just for their own popularity and for this. You know, what it is, I think a lot of people also get this mis misconstrued, I'm the king of hate, oh, that's because he hates on everyone. No, that's not where I got the name from. I've, I've now explained so many damn times, it's because people seem to find a way to hate me, and I take that hate and I turn it around into fuel for me to keep going. It's happened in the Street Fighter community, now it's happening on YouTube, and it's not going to stop me. You know what I mean? Um, but I've grown and I've changed. For a Thanksgiving special, DSP would make a long video thanking everyone in his life that helped him become successful. He would begin with Panda Lee thanking her for being there to support him during this year of hate, but also mentioning that she may have done some silly things in chat one time. First of all, obviously my girlfriend, Leanna, who has changed my life. I mean, honestly, to have someone who loves you uh, and unconditional love as well, 
Someone who supports you in everything that you do, that through the good times and the bad times is going to stick around for you. Regardless of the fact that some people may have issue because she did something silly in the stream chat one day or she just rubs you the wrong way, you have to understand that the person that I know is a different image than what you see in the public eye from, you know, her making videos or being on Twitter or being in the stream chat. She's a very loving person and uh, she really has made my life different in a great way that previously I didn't have. And I'll be honest with everyone, if I didn't have her ongoing support on a daily basis, I don't know how much of this stuff I would have been able to take this year. Because uh, there was a lot of bullshit I put up with this year. There was a lot of risks I took. Uh, there was a lot of negativity. And she basically helped me through that, okay? John Rambo would also get a special section thanking him for all the support he gave Phil during this trying year. I want to thank John Rambo in particular. Because John has been a steadfast friend ever since, you know, that day when I was laid off from my job. He has basically bent over backwards and said, listen, Phil, we're going to make this work, you know. And he's been here to do co-op with me. He's been my travel companion on many different trips and business ventures that we've been on. Um, different projects, whether it was Project 7 where we were all involved together, whether it's me helping him out on the show to uh, you know, to be a special guest and things like that, we're always willing to help each other out. And he, I mean, let's be honest, he could have easily said, "Well, Phil, I have my own YouTube channel now, and I also want to focus on that. So no more co-op, no more smart guys. It's all going away because I'm going to focus on my own shit." He hasn't done that. And in fact, in anything, if anything, we've grown to be better friends over these past several years because he's been there for me. And a lot of times when I needed help with particular things or with a game or with anything, and he's a good friend. And I do, I do hope that he understands that, that I do appreciate the fact that I know that every week when he comes for co-op, he's driving like an hour and a half or longer to get here and back each way that, that he drives that much. Um, and, uh, you know, I am going to make an honest effort in the future to retain that, that cooperative aspect of our gameplay and also our friendship, regardless of what happens, okay? Notably, John Rambo's section of the video was longer than Panda Lee's section. The SP would thank his existing fans and express how he's 100% honest on the internet. I want to say special thanks to those of you who are longtime fans. And for with all the changes that happened this year, the direct capture, the live streaming, the negativity that came from YouTube, the fact that you guys know me because you know that I like to share things. And I really do feel that I am the realest guy on the internet. I am the realest guy. You can ask me a question. I will give you a straight fucking answer. I'm not hiding anything i'm not some snide guy who's really has some secret dark past or has some cruel intentions you know what i mean i really since day one when i started this i said i'm just going to be honest with everyone what a concept someone who's going to be open and honest with the internet and not bullshit and not only show you a certain facade or act like a certain personality to try to get popularity no when you see me this is me all right and uh i enjoy that relationship that i have with the internet so I want to thank you for those of you who are longtime viewers or fans who this year rolled with the punches and said, all right, so there's a lot of negativity. Phil made a lot of changes that maybe we don't agree with, but we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt, okay? And we're going to see if he can, you know, make it through this transitional year because that's really what 2013 was. It was a big transitional year for me. And the fact that I had the ongoing support of people like that really held me help me to go and move on. He would go on to thank all the new viewers for giving him a chance and not believing all the detractive videos about him. Where is this hidden agenda? Where is this secret evil of Dark Side Phil? And of course the bottom line is it doesn't exist. It's, it's all bullshit and that's not the purpose of this video but I want to thank the people who are newcomers who gave me the benefit of the doubt and who continue to watch my content despite you know it seems to be the the YouTube fad talking heads who want to talk shit about me. You know what? It's always been like that. Let's be honest. Even before this year, there were always people who were talking shit about me. And there's various reasons why people do it. And they change from time to time. But the fact that you gave me the benefit of the doubt, the fact that this year, and I'll say this because a lot of people like to spread misinformation. A lot of people right now will tell you that Phil is losing subscribers in the thousands. People are leaving in, in droves from his content because, you know, they don't like him anymore because he's a bad person. This year in particular, I got a ton of new subscribers in comparison to the past two years. So we're not here to be perfectionists. We're not here to criticize how someone plays a game. We're here to have fun. 
That's the purpose of gaming. It's supposed to be to have fun. Not to say, well, my life's miserable. I don't have a job. I don't have a girlfriend. But I'm really good at this one game. So I'm going to make videos of it and put them on YouTube and have good worth for myself. And I'll stroke my giant invisible e-cock because this is my only sense of worth in life. Wait a minute. There's someone on the internet who's not doing it for that reason. And he's having fun and he's making a living doing it. Destroy that person, fuck him, how dare he? And the bottom line is that's the situation with a lot of these people right now. They just cannot stand that I am having fun, making a living, doing what I'm doing, having fun with you, and they're so incredibly jealous that they can't make it happen for themselves that they have to shit talk. So if you are a newcomer in this past year, you've been looking to say, what is this negativity surrounding Dark Side Phil? That's a lot of it. It's not all of it. That's a lot of it, and that's really where a lot of it is coming from. Okay. During the same video where he was thanking people, DSP would reveal that he still held a grudge against Google and Attractors for when he lost his AdSense account and his Blip TV partnership three years ago. I've been doing this since uh, early 2011, when uh, I was laid off from my full-time job in late 2010. Uh, I tried to do a personal ad program through Google itself. That didn't work out because Google accused me of fraud, which is fucking ridiculous. I never did anything that was fraudulent whatsoever. Um, anyone who even tries to accuse me of it, you can't, you, you know, everything that I ever said was maybe an allusion to something, but I never outright violated Google's terms. In fact, that's not why they terminated that partnership. They actually terminated that partnership because they thought that people were jumping on the videos and doing, using bots to click them. Now, I don't know, maybe they were, maybe there were people who were so emotionally affected by me losing my job and my underdog story. They said, I really want to help them. Let's get bots clicking on ads and stuff to get Phil more money. And maybe that's what happened. I don't know. And that was years ago, and that's in the past, okay? Then I went to another website called Blip TV for about a month and a half, to which, again, yes, this is my the story of my life. People who hate on me, who didn't want me to succeed, went there and started a false smear campaign against me, an anti-DSP campaign, campaign, trying to convince the owners of Blip TV that I was a racist. Now, any of you who've watched my content over the years, you know that I'm an equal opportunity jokester. I will say... Oh, you know, Chinese and Asian jokes. I will say, you know, black jokes. I will say Mexican jokes. I will say Middle Eastern jokes. I make fun of myself more frequently than anyone else. So I'm an equal opportunity, you know, person who will make fun of everyone. I'm not a racist. But Finally, he would thank all the detractors for fueling him with his hate. And notably, this would be the longest section of the video. I want to say a special thank you. And I actually mean it. I want to say a special thank you to all of my haters. I want every one of you who ever made a hateful montage about me, whoever made fun of me, said that I'm a fat fuck, said that I'm ugly, I hate my girlfriend, I make, I'm a horrible gamer, he's terrible at fighting games, he's terrible at this, he's a horrible person, he's a liar. I want to thank each and every one of you. And I don't mean that in a snide or sarcastic way. Here's why I say that. Because you don't know where the actual moniker, the king of hate, came from, because you never bothered to open your fucking ears and listen to what I had to say. The reason that I'm called the king of hate is not because I love to hate on people and hate on things. It's not. That's not whatsoever where that came from. It came from every facet of my life, no matter where I was, whether it was in high school, in college, in a street fighter career, in my official business career, people love to be dicks to me. They love to not give me a fair shake. They love to hate on me. They love to tell me that I can't do something. And I've had so many times in my life when someone told me, you know what, you can't do it. And I really felt, no, but I think I could. I think I'm being held back. And people say, no, fuck you. You're no good. Get the fuck out. We don't want you. Just blatant hate. But the reason I call myself the king of hate isn't because I get all angry and I, I rant on everyone. No, it's because I take that fucking hate and I let it build up inside of me. And I let it become a force. I let it become a force that drives me to say, you fucking going to tell me that I'm no good, that I'm a fat fuck, that I can't do something. I'm going to take that and I'm going to throw it in your face. So what I have to say to everyone out there who's made it their professional career now to try to hate on me is look at me now. I am not going anywhere. I own your fucking hate as a badge to show that there's so many people that want me to fail and I refuse to fucking lose. Thank you for the motivation to let me continue to put out entertaining content on a daily basis. Every day when I get up and I put out a quality video, it puts a smile on my face because number one, I know that it 
entertains someone and otherwise someone who might have been having a bad or shitty day now is entertained and it feels better. But number two, I know that I just proved you wrong. Oh no, you can cyber bully me because I'm the little guy, but I want you to know something. I'm one of the fucking originators. I'm one of the people who stuck his neck out and back in 2008 started to do something different on YouTube in an entertaining fashion that n almost no one else was doing. I have inspired people. Yeah, that's right. PewDiePie has said he was inspired by me to make videos. He used to watch my content back when he had no money to buy games. He would watch me play the games. That's how he got the idea to make his content. 2014 is going to be, I'm going to call it right now. It's going to be the most positive year of my life so far. So keep it up. Keep up the good work. I salute you, my haters. Thank you for the ongoing support. I appreciate it. It is the fuel to my fire. It is the badge that I wear to let me know that I can prove you wrong and I will continue to do so until I so choose to leave YouTube and Twitch of my own volition, period. At the end of the year, the ESP would make a list of the top 10 most positive changes of 2013 using the hashtag DSPositive. Of course, he would dedicate a portion of the number one slot to address all the detractors and rant about them. Content ID matches happening on YouTube. They're saying, oh, well, good, because people should have to get real jobs and they shouldn't be able to make a living off the internet and off of YouTube. You people are so miserable. You're so pathetic that you couldn't make something that you enjoyed into a way to support yourself that you've got to let that negativity permeate into everyone else and everything else. And I really didn't let that happen. I said, you know what? I'm going to push forward with my positive changes. I'm never going to allow myself to be held down down by people who tell me what and how to do something because as you know there is always a little nugget of truth in things that people say but the fact that the people really just completely blew stuff out of proportion this year to try to destroy my internet personality and my internet career was absolutely ludicrous but we stayed positive and we focused on being positive and there are more positive changes coming those positive changes would be him moving out of connecticut having more places to film potentially getting a green screen and he would be buying the King of Hate forums. Evil AJ would join the hashtag DS Positive movement by making a montage of the most negative moments of 2013. Oh my God! Listen to these. Listen to the butt hurt fanboys in the stream. You didn't finish the game. You cheesed the game so much that it would be impossible. Ooh, you cheated. Ooh. Fucking idiot. <laughs> oh my God. Ooh, you cheated. Ooh. DSP, you're a cheater. DSP, fuck you, DSP. Ooh. Even though it was nearing Christmas and he was setting up a tree with Panda Lee, he found time to rant about the detractors and express how he was the innovator of Let's Plays. People complain that I'm not a pro-level player. No, I'm not. I don't sit here and play the game 400 fucking times before I do a playthrough. That's not me. It's never been me. And it's weird because up to this year, everyone knew that. And if someone made fun of me and said, oh, he's not good at a game, people would laugh. All of a sudden, this year, it becomes a fad to make fun of me because I'm not good at games. Like, dude, I've been making videos since 2008. Now you just fucking figured it out? How about you you, you wake the fuck up? You know? I'm better than you at games. I'm one, of the, I'm one of the innovators of people who make videos on YouTube for gaming. I pretty much blew up the whole Let's Play scene when I started doing it with live commentary, dicking around, not being a walkthrough, not being a pro-level playthrough. But people are so jealous that someone's able to do that and make a living off of it instead of worrying about themselves that they have to focus on bullying, on, on ridicule rather than on creative content. All those people who are out there and all they do is make fun of others, take a look at their actual creative content, their let's plays and shit, they're terrible. That's why they resort to that other stuff. As a special treat to all his viewers, he would make a Christmas special making fun of all the detractors. You're a loser, Mr. Troll. You really are a dick You spend all your time hating You really make me sick, Mr. Troll I'd suggest doing something creative, but You've got no talent You're an asshole this was the end of the year of hate for DSP. He had come out the other side and survived, though it was unclear how much damage his community of fans and his reputation had taken. 2013 would end with a message of positivity from Phil. 
this would begin the year of positivity for 2013. Thank you for sticking with me this year, everyone. I will see you in 2014. Stay positive. Great things can happen to you if you are positive, and you stick with it through the negative times. That's the key here. Don't give up. Don't let this deterrence and the bullshit people that tell you that you can't do something or you're not good at something and that you shouldn't be successful. You go like this, and you fucking push on with your positivity, and you're going to do great things with your life. That's my attitude, and look what I've done so far. And we're moving on to bigger and better things, hopefully, in 2014. The year of positivity would end within two weeks of 2013 when a fan would ask the SB if he's homophobic during an Ask the King segment. He says, second question is this, I stayed away from your work for a good while due to the fact that I was always told, wait do you hear this, don't support Phil because he's anti-gay and he funds anti-gay foundations. <laughs> huh? That is incredibly ridiculous. That is, I mean, wow. The ridiculous amount of misinformation about me on the internet, it's just unfounded. The bullshit that people spew out of their mouths about me. I can't believe that someone actually stayed away from me believing that, all right? I am an equal opportunity jokester. You'll see in my videos that I will joke about everything. I'll joke about Asians. I'll joke about Mexicans. I'll joke about Middle Eastern people. I'll joke about white people. I'll joke about black people. I'll joke about gays. I'll joke about women. I'll joke about everything. Because that's comedy. Comedy is like you're not always harping on the same thing. It's when you always harp on the same thing that you can tell that maybe there's a little nugget of truth behind what someone's saying. But I think if you watch the, 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 the videos that I put out, there's never some kind of a ringing pattern of me consistently doing the same stuff. Oh, I need to slander Phil's name because I don't like him. Or I'm mad at him because he insulted me in, at some point. Or he's really changed this year. He's all about negativity. So let me destroy his name, right? Instead of ignoring the person you don't like, let's destroy him. And that's what they did. They spread all this misinformation. DSP would take over the King of Hate forums and state that anything related to known internet memes dedicated to negativity would result in a permanent ban, including KWO. He would state that he's all for legit criticism, but it would not stand for these anti-DSP movements. Thanks for understanding and moving forward positively. During a livestream, DSP would say his viewers have mental problems if they ask him a question that he's already answered in a previous video. The one thing I will say, before we get started here, is that if you're wondering why I'm not playing The Wolf Among Us right now, you basically should have watched the Weekend Preview, and you should have been listening to the 5 million avenues which I disseminate information regarding what I'll be playing during the course of the week, including other streams. And, like I said, I, I do these things for a reason. You know, and some people say, well, Phil, the Weekend Preview, you make it 20 minutes long, and... We can't sit through that. Well, you know what? Then you've got a problem. You've got a serious issue. I'm not joking. You need to go see a, a medical professional. Because if you can't listen to an intelligent discussion and information that's informative that you want to know for 20 minutes straight, you have a physical, mental, some kind of problem and you need to be treated. A YouTuber and live streamer named Slow Beef would do a parody impersonation of Darkside Phil called Darkside Beef. How are they supposed to see in the dark, too? It doesn't even fucking make sense. Bunch of fucking amateurs. Fucking idiots. I won the fucking Dark Souls tournament, which is why I'm the fucking the king of souls, is what my name is. The king of soul hate. But seriously, guys. Stay DS, stay DS positive. That is positive that Demon Souls is a fun game to watch. And also click an ad while you're here. Because it helps my channel. <laughs> During the livestream, Dirk Side Beef would pull up videos of DSP and play small portions of the video. DSP believed that Slow Beef was restreaming his content and tried to contact Twitch on Twitter to get Slow Beef banned off the platform. DSP would go on to apologize to Slow Beef publicly and say he was misinformed about the restreaming aspect of Slow Beef's stream, but then go on to the King of Hate forums and call Slow Beef a dick. DSP would try to justify his actions of trying to get Slow Beef banned off Twitch by saying, Okay, so I'll go TP his house, egg his cur, break in and trash the place, fuck his wife, then act surprised when he calls the cops on me. Just because this is the internet makes it no different, that's what people don't get. It's the internet, so I can do whatever I want. No, fuck you, you cannot. End of discussion. DSP would go on a rant on how YouTube has become oversaturated with content creators, 
and this oversaturation of creators have caused people to go to Adblocker and blames Adblocker for his reduced income. Whenever the paper's involved, that's when things change. Because immediately, when people said, wait a minute, that dark side Phil guy's doing that. Man, I could do that too, you know? I mean, he... He's not, he, I don't believe that he's so popular. He has creativity and people rush, right? And it's not just me. I'm using myself as an example because I was one of the people who was first had their, their gaming channel partnered and started making good money doing it, okay? And what ended up happening was you had massive amounts of people flood the fucking website. Flood, 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 flood. So now anytime you want to see a game, there's 5,000 people doing playthroughs with ads all over the fucking thing. Donate money, send money. Give us money, 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 money. And it's like, how different is that from when I even started? You know what I mean? Back then in 2011, you had what? 20, 30 people who were really big gamers on YouTube and had ads on their videos. So that wasn't that big of a deal. Now you've got 500,000 people who flooded YouTube who all want to get ads on their videos. And now it's a fucking problem, right? Now it's an epidemic. Now you try to watch any clip on YouTube and there's a four minute full fucking preview for a movie that's the dumbest, stupid, most uninspired piece of shit you've ever seen. And there's no skip button to skip the ad. And you're like, what the fuck is this? I don't want to see this four minute long piece of shit, stupid trailer. So you get your ad block, you install it, right? And now everything's free. You know, oh, no waiting, no pop-ups. No, if I'm on Twitch TV and I'm watching this live stream, I don't have to see a Cracker Barrel ad pop, pop up, and I don't have to hear about Monistat C or whatever the fuck it is, and hear about you know yeast infections and all kinds of dis you know disgusting ads that you never wanted to hear to begin with. I can skip all that shit and I get all the content for free. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. I don't know how much louder I can yell. Wrong. Because what's happened now? is because so many people oversaturated the market and put so many ads on everything that every person is now using Adblock. During a Hate Life podcast, DSP would dedicate half of the podcast to a friend that was tragically killed in the 90s. And when we come back, we're gonna have a segment like no other. We've never done anything like this on Hate Live. I'm gonna reminisce and, and basically bear my heart to you guys about my friend uh, from back in the day uh, who passed away. I'm gonna tell you all about my experiences with him. <clears throat> And I'm going to show you some never-before-seen photos of him and as well of, of uh, a fighting game tournament that he attended in the late 1990s. Once the podcast concluded, it was uploaded to YouTube to be monetized and have ads playing on it. This would create controversy as people would call out DSP for monetizing a dead friend. He would be confronted during a live stream and he would react negatively. A lot of idiots, of course. Oh my god! Phil should disable all ads on all videos where he ever mentions his friend. You know what? Shut the fuck up. Seriously. Like, that's what this is about, right? Because that's why I'm doing it. You know what? Shut the fuck up. And I'll say this to anyone. Anyone who's going to accuse me of shit like that, that I'm doing this to make money, I will come find you in real life and I will beat the shit out of you. Because that's how serious I am about it. You know? You're going to accuse me of shit like that. Grow the fuck up. During a live stream, DSP complained about how YouTubers don't finish the games they're playing, specifically Final Fantasy XIII, and they only care about the money. He would subsequently rage quit Final Fantasy XIII on a live stream and restream someone else's playthrough of the ending. You know, being the biggest guy or making the, the most money or anything like that, it's not what this is about for me. <clears throat> I mean, look, here I am playing Lightning Returns when most people gave up. A lot of people bought this game and gave up on it. Some people on YouTube started a playthrough and said, fuck this game, and went on to other stuff for a few reasons. First of all, because the game is pretty bad, but also because the game's not very popular. No one really cares that much about it. Me, I'm sticking with it. I'm sticking with it till we get to the end of the game today. You know what I mean? Um, and a lot of the times I've been playing stuff that people say, oh, why are you playing this? It's not popular. Or, you know, why aren't you playing this other, this other overhyped fucking thing that came out? And I'm like, because I don't feel like it. You know, there are people out here that aren't about that. They're not about the games they're playing. They're about making money. I think I, I, think I got it. Hold on. <laughs> we watch the ending together and be like, fuck this stupid shit. <laughs> fuck this stupid final boss fight. Eat a dick. All right, hold on a second. <clears throat> uh, where is it? Yes, fuck it. 
We're watching the ending. We deserve it. We put up with this shit for too long. We're getting the ending. <laughs> That's how you do it. Fuck this game. Chaos Master 10. Oh, Phil, it's gonna be hard to watch your videos again after this. Shut the fuck up. Did you suffer through this stinker? And if you did, why? <laughs> Seriously. Keep in mind, I played the previous games. This is crap. You're gonna criticize me because I didn't beat the final boss. Well, you fucking do it yourself and leave me alone. How about that? How about you don't hold people on YouTube up to your selfish standards of how a gamer should behave or perform? If you enjoy the content, watch it. If you don't, don't. But don't sit on someone's stream and just criticize nonstop like you're some high and mighty motherfucker who's better than everyone else because you're not. That's the bottom line. You chose to watch the content. If you don't like it, don't watch it. The SP would create a habit where he would criticize other content creators and he would name them specifically. One creator he had named specifically was Total Biscuit and used his name frequently. This would cause Total Biscuit to respond in a post. Here are some highlights of Total Biscuit's post. Total Biscuit would say he does not like seeing someone harassed online, but the SP brings it onto himself, especially with the King of Hate persona and being super negative. Total Biscuit would say that the SP is terrible for insulting his fans, but also say that viewers are not immune to criticism themselves because they can act like assholes, act entitled, or act whiny. Total Biscuit would state that DSP needs help, specifically therapy. Total Biscuit would state that he himself needs therapy and is easily provoked into engaging with trolls online as well. He would bring up how DSP does giveaways but only giving away the game boxes, making him believe that DSP has problems he has to deal with because this is not a normal, sensible thing to do. In the end, Total Biscuit would say that he pities DSP and that DSP is a metaphorical arsonist obsessed with burning down his own house. As a final line, Total Biscuit would say KWO was hilarious. In May, the SP would have a meltdown during a livestream, addressing Total Biscuit's response, but also addressing Slow Beef and Evil AJs. This is how you don't play videos once again. ...thing that I'm gonna address, this is, I promise you guys, this is the last time I'm gonna address this, because I'm tired of fucking repeating myself at this point, okay? I'm done with it. Because the bottom line is this. Since last year, since... Slow Beef and whoever the other guy is, the two guys that get together and they rich super ride people, okay? Since they made this video about me a year ago, a little over a year ago now, about how bad I was at Metal Gear Solid 2. No shit, I said I was when I started the playthrough, so they completely missed the point. But anyway, they made this video, and I guess it wasn't bad intentioned, it was just meant to be funny. A parody video of me being bad at Metal Gear Solid 2. Now they didn't ask me for permission to do it, they didn't explain what they were doing at the time, they just did it. And I got, got contacted by a bunch of fans telling me there's these guys making fun of you. So, of course, I reacted badly. Should I have reacted the, in the way that I did? No. If I had known the frame of reference that they had been doing this to people for years and years on end. Uh, and that it was kind of a, almost a rite of passing that they do this to every Let's Player on the internet. I probably wouldn't have reacted as I did. The problem was no one told me that. I saw the thing completely out of reference. Didn't understand it. To me, it looked like it was something mean-spirited and malicious. And I reacted negatively to it. And ever since then, that was it. That opened the floodgates. Wow. You can make a funny video making fun of Phil and his gameplay. And immediately, it can fucking make you become super popular. And everyone knows this. It's become the thing on YouTube for the past year and a half. Everyone's been doing it. Okay? I'm about making positive content. Focusing on the positive. Pushing forward positively. I don't care that there's hundreds of thousands of people out there who watched... Kojima World Order montages about me and they think it's the funniest fucking thing ever to make fun of someone who makes his living off the fucking internet. Right? So obviously I'm doing something right if this is how I'm making my living. But they don't want to talk about that. They want to talk about how they're so much better than me so they can stroke their giant e-dicks. And they want to take the, you know, two dozen times in the 30,000 plus videos that I've said something stupid or I said something I got baited by someone on Ask the King who gave me misinformation about a topic so I said something dumb that obviously if I was informed on the subject I wouldn't have said something like that but they take that, oh look, Phil's a hypocrite Phil's an asshole, Phil insults people Phil does this, he's that I don't care about it anymore, I'm done I'm at this point, I'm about to move to Washington State I don't give a flaming fuck about any of it and I'm going to tell you right now, if you fucking tweet me about it, if you email me about it, if you bother me about it, I'm just going to block you and never speak to you again. I don't care how long of a time of a fan you've been. I can't put up with this shit anymore. I still, still, 
for how many months have I been saying I don't care, don't tell, still, today, Phil, did you hear what Total Biscuit said about you? Oh my god, you you, you, you name drop him, and he says that he sh you should name drop him, and you should go see, have, see a therapist, and I fucking, I put my hands on my face, I'm like, oh my fucking god. Oh my fucking God. How, in what way do I have to say it? Do I have to go to your house with a fucking brand and brand it on your fucking forehead? I don't care. I don't fucking care. He basically thinks that, the again, which is what everyone thinks because this is what the Kojima World Order says, think that the king of hate moniker is that because I like to hate on games and that when I play games it's a it's a persona that I portray to be very negative and unfair to the game developers and rip them a new asshole and only blame the game and never take credit for my mistakes myself despite the fact that I've explained five fucking thousand times how that works but no one wants to hear it they just want to focus on their own little private stupid world version of what's going on instead of the reality that I've explained that the king of hate has nothing to do with me hating on games at all it's about me owning the hate that people throw my way and turning it into a way to fuel myself to succeed. But no one wants to hear that. It goes in one ear and out the other. Oh, well, he's the king of hates, but he can't take the hate, but he can hate. hate, hate. Fuck you. Seriously. If you can't take five seconds to find out what the moniker has been since day one and you want to spew out stupid misinformed bullshit, you're a fucking idiot. My content is a Joe Average guy playing games, having rage frustration and reactions to things naturally that anyone would have and yes i blame the game makers uh, to some extent absolutely i do but that's not the focus of my content someone sends me oh did you hear what total biscuit total biscuit doesn't know me from a fucking badger's asshole he doesn't watch my videos i don't watch his videos right the only reason i've even been talking about him is things that he's publicly stated right about negativity on the internet about getting attacked about but you know letting it get to you about medical issues i god sake i wished him well because he announced that he had cancer how's that name dropping what the fuck are you talking about but i don't care if total biscuit doesn't know who i am or understand my content i don't give a fuck the fact that at the very end of his post he said i find kojima world order to be hilarious immediately shows that he has an inc incorrect frame of reference that he doesn't watch my content he's only watched the hate montages and he thinks they're funny so, I already said it once, I'm going to say it finally, this is the last time I'm fucking saying it. I don't care if Jesus Christ comes out of the fucking sky and tells me that my content sucks, don't tell me about it, don't tweet me, don't email me, don't fucking come to my door, don't fucking send me physical mail, don't fucking make a giant sign and fucking, you know, fly a plane with the sign through the skyline, I don't care. I am here to continue to make entertaining content for you, period. That's it. That's all I care about, and I think a fuse just blew. <laughs> After this meltdown on a live stream, he would go on a Twitter rant saying he was done referencing anyone else in his content again, and he just wanted to focus on his own stuff. These people would go on to rant how he's an exception to the rule, and after years of success, resentment has created a movement to take him down because he made a gaming career on YouTube a different way than other creators. He would say just because you played one game in two weeks, sat in front of a vid editor, and made crazy high production vids doesn't mean you worked harder, lol. Look at the critique I get from bigger YouTubers. His content sucks because he doesn't edit out fails. There's no effort. Huh? Editing equals effort? Keep in mind, I've made more videos than any individual on YouTube ever, but that's not to some because I didn't vid edit. I'm the devil. Because I became successful without being like everyone else, it sort of mass resentment in the pit of the stomach of those who work harder than me. It comes down to this, Phil played games, wasn't good at them, but got popular and made a living on it without massive vid editing effort. So now learning some stuff makes total sense why Khan started shunning me and an anti-DSP movement started. There was deep rooted resentment. Never been part of an in crowd in my life, whether in school, work, YouTube, and it seems that clicks always seem to boom to keep me out. Life lesson, even if you never say something negative about anyone, if you're in competition with them, they're not your colleague-friend. In fact, it may even be behind the reason that I've been denied panels, etc. at conventions and this just coming to light is just sickening. Even then, I say my piece and I move on and try to focus on my own stuff. Apparently, the anti-DSP movement has deeper roots than that. It's coming to my knowledge that a group of people have been talking shit about me, my content, behind my back for years, and it's shocking. Folks, I hope you know that I've always done my best to be honest and fair with you. 
If I have something to say, I'll say it publicly. As the year began to approach summer, DSP was preparing for his move to Washington State. He would encourage his fans to subscribe to his Twitch channel to increase his income as the move will be expensive. Right now, I'm in the midst of a move. I'm in the midst of a move across the country. In one month's time, I will hopefully have moved across the country and will be busy moving in my stuff, uh, furnishing the new home, getting set up in my office to do this in my new place. And it's going to be a great experience, but it's going to be a very, very stressful, very expensive experience. Because not only am I doing this, am I moving across the country, but I'm also trying to sell this place in Connecticut. I cannot afford to have two mortgages forever. And right now, I'll be honest with everyone, the past month to two months, April and now May, up to now have been pretty slow. So, you know, it's been a bunch of disappointments. And I understand that when you have that, I get a slow month. But... What I would like to pitch, obviously, for you is that if you could, if you ever have considered doing it, if you want to consider to see, see me keep doing this, live streaming gameplay, now I'm upgrading to 1080p, right? Always improving, always trying to do things a little differently to make it better for you guys. Um, consider becoming a paid subscriber on Twitch here because that is st solid income for me on a monthly basis. It's consistent. I don't have to worry about views on the stream. Because I can say, you know what, I got a bunch of people who are supporting me by doing a $5 a month subscription. I get half of that. And you get things for it. You get access to subscriber-only emotes. You get access During the summer, DSP would make his move from his small Connecticut condo to his Washington house, taking a large break in his content creation due to the move. When he ultimately returned to live streaming, he noticed he had less income due to members not subscribing to him again. Those of you who are paid subscribers, here on Twitch TV. I haven't mentioned this in a while, so I figure I'll bring it up again. Um, I am in the paid subscriber program. Uh, unlike a lot of other streamers, I don't take out time uh, and completely derail my co the content of my stream for people who become new paid subscribers. Um, I don't stop the stream. I don't play a noise. There's no pop-up on the screen saying so-and-so became a paid subscriber because if you're going to pay to be a subscriber, you're paying to see the content. You're not paying to see other people get a shout-out for being a paid subscriber. It's bullshit and it's attention-grabbing and it's only for the purposes of making money. It adds nothing to the content of the stream to do that stuff. But people do it just to make money. Well, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to actually enjoy the games I play and to put out quality content, not to be here to be a fucking cash register. So I don't do that stuff, okay? But I still want you to understand that that... that source of income is significant so the paid subscribers are definitely a huge boom and at one point we actually had almost 250 which would have gotten me into the bracket where we can get you guys new uh custom chat emotes uh that you could use in the stream chat but then of course i moved across the country which meant two and a half weeks of downtime no streaming at all and a ton of people i mean like some uh almost 80 people fell out of the program and, uh, you know, it's hard because now that there's no new, new games coming out, it's hard to get those people back. So at this point, I'm, I'll be honest, I've only gotten probably about 20 people back out of the 80 that I lost. And I know it's going to be slow going, unfortunately, until the end of uh, August. You know, again, if you would consider possibly becoming a paid subscriber, understand that I am appreciative of it. Just because I don't stop my entire stream to have a giant attention-grabbing cash register pop up and say, ka I just made money because someone became a paid subscriber. Uh, you know, because I'm not trying to let people be attention whores. No, I don't do that, but I am still incredibly appreciative of the people who are paid subscribers, and I hope that you would consider uh, becoming one, because it does directly help me out. Around this time as well, DSP would realize his PC was not adequate enough to play games and livestream at the same time. Look, it's still bad. I'm on the lowest resolution scale, the lowest resolution possible. It's still bad. Yes, we'll play it like this. I think it's actually lower frame rate than it was before. <laughs> Look at this. Yes. It's still slow. Ah, 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 it's still bad. The Tractus would say DSP's PC would have been adequate enough to play at a higher graphic level and livestream, and the issue was really a system configuration problem. But regardless, DSP went ahead and bought a $3,000 gaming PC so he could livestream and play games at the same time. But during his first livestream with the new PC, he would encounter problems. It's garbage. The game looks like garbage. 
This is a game that I played on good settings on my old PC. It looks like garbage on the new one. <laughs> it looks like garbage. Wow. After this, he would rarely use the PC to play games and live stream. A new detractor group would rise up in 2013 called Sons of Kojima. They would host a podcast discussing the events in Phil's life, but also some members would actively take it upon themselves to interfere with Phil's live stream. One notable member would be Loophole572, who would find his way onto DSP's live streams, make a joke about Panda Lee, causing Phil to react. Hey DSP, can I go with your daughter, uh, Panda Lee, in a couple years? Wow, this guy is just, he's so intelligent. I mean, his humor is so spot on that how could anyone, I mean, how could anyone not just break out into hilarious laughter at these well thought out, poignant remarks from this gentleman? He's just so fucking intelligent and funny. Hilarious. Hilarious the antics tonight. I mean, it's not like he's a complete fucking loser and he's proven to the entire internet that he's a fucking idiot and has a terrible sense of humor and probably is 14 fucking years old. The balls haven't dropped yet because that's what it sounds like on the fucking mic anyway. No, he's cool. <laughs> what an idiot. Um, okay. Here's here's my point of contention um, with this. I was a I was a fan of yours, and I know that some weren't, some are. I was actually on your PSN friends list for a good uh, half a year, I want to say. Mm -hmm. I, I can hear you. Keep going. Okay. Do you know? Um, uh, do you know Loophole Five Seven Two? Uh, the name kind of rings a bell, but not really. Okay. So. Uh, something happened in middle of July. Something happened, and you know it was uh, it was you know people thought it was funny, and you know you got a, a little you know steamed about it. And I, I understand, and yeah, um, I just I've been thinking about this ever since I did it. Um, man, I'm sorry, it's so late. Um, mm -hmm. When are you gonna tuck your daughter Pandalee into bed? It's him. It's like it's that's obviously loophole five seven two. So you see, the whole first half of the call was absolutely productive. I got to explain about the ice bucket challenge, my real feelings, and he had nothing else to say. And then, of course, when you actually get to a point, oh shit, Phil had an intelligent answer, and then he flips it to try to make the same joke. Now I'm gonna make a point about this because this is actually very important. This is what children like him need to understand. Okay, child dog barking. Children like him need to understand that you can make a say anything about a person. You can insult their gameplay. You can insult their character. You can insult whatever you want. But when you start insulting things like their family, their significant other, any stuff like that, that's when you've gone over the line. You've completely, you know, you've, you've gone too far. And all that person has proven in that call right there, which I'm actually glad I took the call, was that He's an insanely immature moron. He'll probably be jerking himself off tonight thinking, oh, I got Phil. When ultimately what he did, he wasted his own time by letting me actually elaborate intelligently about a, fa a thing that people had a misconception about. And now he had to make a stupid, cheap five-year-old crack about st stuff. And, you know, it really is disgusting because he is probably one of the people who will go around the internet and say, oh, Phil dated Panda Lee when she was underage, which is a complete lie. You know, but this is what people want to do. People are just sick, man. Seriously. So jerk yourself off tonight, you stupid loser. Seriously. And, you know, he says, oh, I was a fan of yours since Duke Nukem, but then I made a joke about your girlfriend and you blocked me on PSN and everywhere else. Yeah, you don't insult a, a person's family. They're significant. You don't do that. You just don't. That's actual pussy shit. That's like if you would, if you were a man, you go out into the street and you fight one on one. You don't attack the family of them behind their back or anything like that. That's just despicable. What a loser. Seriously. What a fuck. This would be one of the last times DSP would accept calls on the Hate Life podcast, indicating to detractors he was afraid of being confronted by them. This would draw parallels to the time he was confronted by Jaha in prison 10 years ago. DSP would talk about depression and how YouTube helped him get out of it. He would also talk about a back surgery that may have resolved his back problem, but due to his finances, he couldn't get it right now. And since then, I mean, things have only gotten better. And a lot of people might say, oh, but Phil, your views are down or whatever. How could I possibly complain about my life? Just have some perspective here. 
I went from living with my parents to having my own condo and having my own business, making my own schedule, having money, dating women, finally having a, a, a full-time girlfriend who I want to be with, moving out of that situation, moving up to a better house out here in Washington. You know what I mean? Like, how could I possibly sit here and say I complain and be depressed? You know, far be it from me, okay, to say that any of that stuff would ever make me go back to where I was. Because I was literally standing on the edge at one point uh, with the amount of drinking that I was doing and the fact that I was just so negative about everything and hating my life and hating everything around me. And I'm so different now. I'm going to be honest with you guys. You guys, the viewers who have stuck with me, you guys who basically supported me the whole way through, no matter what was going on, no matter what lame brain thing I said, no matter if views were high or low, if I was on the high of a high or a low of the low of the wave of popularity that I had on YouTube, you guys coming back and saying that you appreciate my content and you find me entertaining and that I put a smile on your face during a day when otherwise you were depressed, that makes me feel good and it makes me know that I can never go back to where I was. My uh, I don't have any money. I really don't have any money right now. Right now, when I moved to this house and I furnished this house, I tapped my finances. And it's going to take me a year probably. I mean, it started in June, me spending on this place. Probably it's going to take me about a year to financially get to a situation where all the bills are, are, are now paid down, the credit cards are down, the financing is down, and now I feel like I have some credit freed up that if I needed to get the surgery, I have the ability to pay for it. Right now, I don't. During an Ask the King, DSP would criticize mobile gaming as being inferior to other games, but also state how addictive they can be. Just to show you how stupid this game is, okay? You go into a menu, you click here. Oh, okay, look, there's cards on the screen. So I tap, look, here's, here's the extent of mobile gaming and where it can go. I'm about to show you, okay? Just look at this. Little cards, there's cards, they come out on the screen, right? And then I tap an option, okay, here's my option. And there's little cards are dancing down to the ring. And look, it's cute, the cards are fighting. Oh, the cards are fighting, oh, it's so cute. And you see my point, the point that I was trying to make back then is that mobile gaming, although it may be a viable... Look, oh, here come the cards. They're cute. They're walking down to the ring. They bounce around the road. Look, they're going to fight. Look. Oh, they're charging up like Dragon Ball. And now they're going to... Look, come on. Oh, I'm charging up. Oh, I'm charging up. Oh, and then they bounce off of each other. And... Oh, and you get you win the fight. See what I mean? That's mobile gaming. Here you go. Tap it. Oh, look. They're fighting. Oh, they're fighting. Oh, 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 oh. Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar. Oh, I won. Oh. And that's the game. Okay. The thing is, this stuff is big business. This right here, tapping, and then, oh, I can't progress. I gotta spend some money to progress, and people put their money in. It's big fucking business. It's huge. It's addicting. I completely understand. Tonight, there's an event in this game that I'm gonna be playing. It's a new event. just started tonight. The People's Champion event. John Cena versus Brock Lesnar. Special stuff. I'm gonna be doing it. And so many people are addicted to it, and they're dumping hundreds and hundreds of dollars into these games, and it's like, wow, like, really? Like, that is how you're spending your money. Instead of spending it on these great, amazing games that people are making and groundbreaking and really changing it the art form, or changing the games into an art form, you're spending $400 on a card game where you tap like this. On the forums, DSP would make posts discussing how he spent hundreds of dollars on mobile games, specifically a WWE Super Curd game. Though the hundreds of dollars he had said he spent may be an understatement. He would explain that he believes the top five people above him are cheating because they're somehow spending more money than him or playing more than him, saying they must be using multiple accounts or must be using stolen credit cards to be able to spend more money than him. During an Ask the King segment, someone that would ask what happened to John Rambo because John Rambo was appearing in less and less content on DSP's channel ever since his move to Washington. DSP would go on to explain how busy John Rambo was, then read off private messages between himself and John Rambo. Uh, internet-based things I think I've ever seen in my life. It's really well done, especially for keeping in mind that John did 99% of the work himself, the filming, the writing, the editing, really. He did everything himself, the music, shit. And I didn't hear back from him after that. I texted him and congratulated him on the show, and I said, it's great, you know, what are you, what are you, what are you thinking for our stuff now? When can we get started up? So I hadn't heard from him. Finally, last night, I'll be honest with you guys, I was feeling kind of not frustrated, but almost worried that something had happened where he was pissed at me or something, that he wasn't responding to anything that I was sending him. Uh, and so I went ahead and I texted him again. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I told you guys I'm the realest person on the internet. I got nothing to hide. I'm going to tell you exactly what we talked about in, on, uh, via text. And basically I said, uh, here you go. I said, hey, John, I hope you're doing well. Haven't heard from you recently. 
I like to catch up with you, you know, off camera. Don't worry about any filming. I just want to hear how you're doing. I, we haven't talked in a while and it feels weird to me. I knew you had schnozzle going on, but when you didn't respond at all to my text last week, it felt like something may be wrong. Just let me know. No pressure. I want to know where we stand in that. You're okay. And then John did respond this morning and he said, hey, you're going to have to count, count me out for a while. I need to get my money together so that I can move to a better place. YouTube stuff isn't going to help me with that. I'm around most nights if you ever want to call. So I did respond to him and I said, all right, in the next couple days, I'll try to squeeze in a time when I can call. I know there's a big time zone difference. But the bottom line is it sounds to me like John is just not interested in doing anything on YouTube right now. Um... After reading off private messages on the live stream, John Rambo would cut off contact from DSP. DSP would also unfollow John Rambo and Howard off Twitter. During a live stream, a Twitch admin would ask DSP to lower his bitrate as it was too high at the time for the website. DSP would comply with it, but then later on in the month, he would leave Twitch altogether due to this incident. On the King of Hate forums, there would be new drama regarding the moderation of the website. The moderation team was upset with DSP's censorship and moderation of all the posts that he found negative on the website. The moderation team and DSP would come to an agreement where DSP would be censoring less posts on the website and allowing the moderation team to do their job. DSP would break this agreement and moderators on the King of Hate forums and some Twitch mods would issue a mass resignation. One moderator would summarize their experience as, Phil, I'd say I wish you the best in the future and that I enjoyed my time moderating for you, but that would be a lie. DSP would make a post saying that the mods did not hold up their end of the agreement, saying he refuses to pay thousands of dollars for a website where he gets personally attacked with slander on a daily basis by the same people and the mods won't actually moderate. He would say at the end that he had spent at least $30,000 on the website. After this incident, DSP would reveal one of the site admins took control of the website. DSP would also say he can't do the giveaway and that this is not just hooting him, it's hooting the fans. In less than a year of taking over the website, the King of Hate forums would be shut down. During a Hate Live segment, DSP would go into why he had left Twitch, explaining he did not want to be a sellout and sell to his fans, and he believed that Twitch did not allow him to produce the highest quality content. In regards to uh, Twitch TV, all right, the, the things that people have said about why I left Twitch TV are some of the most ludicrous things I've ever heard. People saying I got kicked off of Twitch TV and banned, uh, Twitch, you know, didn't want me on there anymore because they thought I was a racist. I've heard some of the most ridiculous things. And people have been, like, creating fake logs and fake emails and stuff to try to prove this stuff, which is so ludicrous, all right? Let me put it to you this way. Twitch TV was an experiment of mine. I, I live-streamed there for about a year and a half. During the year and a half that I live-streamed at Twitch TV, I unfortunately saw a huge negative trend with the website, and let me explain what I mean. And what I noticed is that when I ran a certain amount of ads during a certain period of time and when I had a certain amount of viewers, I made a certain amount of money. It wasn't a lot of money. And I've said this since day one. When I started live streaming last year, it was fan service for you guys. It was never anything for my benefit. It was for your benefit purely. What the fuck kind of business model is that? You might say to yourself, how is that profitable? That their ads have decreased by, you know, three, four hundred percent profit in a year. And the answer is this. Because they don't care about ads anymore. What they care about is shilling the fuck out of things on their website and turning it into a e-commerce website where you're constantly buying things and, and donating and doing that kind of stuff rather than actually there for content. But that seems to only be the way to be profitable on Twitch. You, literally, Twitch has become a website of e-beggars. People who just sit there and instead of caring about what they're doing on Twitch, like a quality playthrough or a quality gameplay stream, it's about bullshitting for five minutes, then, oh, time to thank everyone who became a paid subscriber. Let's play sounds and buzzers and interrupt my content. And now it's time to shill a new product. Here it is. And then they shove the product. That's all it's become. I'm not, I'm not like that. You guys know me. You guys know I've been around since before any of those motherfuckers on Twitch, right? I've been here since 2008. And I'm not going to change the quality of my content uh, because I, that's how you make money on Twitch. A lot of people told me, abandon YouTube and just go to Twitch and do what everyone else does and just shill, shill, shill. No, because that's not me. I'm not here to sell products to you. I'm here to give you quality gameplay content that entertains you and in, in return, I make a living. So that was one of the main reasons why I was leaning towards leaving Twitch to begin with. But the straw that broke the camel's back was when, about a month ago, a little bit over a month ago, I was live streaming, actually it was less than a month ago, now that I think about it, I was live streaming Assassin's Creed Unity on Twitch, and I was streaming at a very high bitrate and a very high quality. I've been doing that for, since June, or what was it? No, since July I've been doing it and no one had ever complained. All of a sudden a moderator came in and told me that I had to stop it. 
To which I was like, I don't like that. You know, I'm a guy who's here. I'm one of the few people on your website that only cares about the purity of the gameplay. And you're going to come in here and tell me that I can't put out a high quality 1080p stream because your website wants me to lower my quality. Oh, I'm sorry. But if I were one of these people who, you know, had 10,000 viewers and had 10,000 paid subscribers, you probably wouldn't bother me, right? It's fine for you to disagree, but it's not fine for people to turn around and use that as, oh, Phil doesn't care about his fans. He just went left Twitch on purpose because he doesn't care about his fans. Uh, guess what, geniuses? If I can't keep doing this for a living, there will be no content. You understand that? I have to move to whatever the format is that's going to allow me to do the highest quality and future-proof myself. I'm not going to limit what I can do with my content because a website wants me to lower my quality so that people can just sit there and fucking chill all day. Detractors would spread the message that DSP was no longer friends with his friends from Connecticut, such as John and Howard. DSP felt like he had to address this, specifically why he had unfollowed John and Howard on Twitter. DSP is no longer friends with anyone back in Connecticut because he unfollowed John Rambo, OJ, and Howard on Twitter. So that's it. That's the end. He'll never talk to them again, and that's the end of everything. Fuck DSP. He's a dick, and, you know, the, everyone hates him. What? <laughs> do you want to know what happened? on? Because this is the thing. People stalk me. People fucking stalk what I do on a daily basis because they're that sick. They're actually following me and stalking me in my life on the internet and everywhere I go to find out stuff I'm doing so they can try to make shit up and fabricate stories. Do you want to know what happened with Twitter? I'll tell you. Twitter made a site change, okay? About I'd say about two weeks ago it was, I think. About a week and a half to two weeks ago. This site change, unfortunately, what happens is people that you're following, anything that they favorite, anyone that they follow, you also get tweets in your feed from that. And I'm like, what? And I realized Twitter changed the website and there's no way to opt out of this that anyone that you follow, you'll get all their shit too. So everyone they follow, you see? So it was like I was getting... 14 to 20 people's Twitter feeds all in one day, and I hated it. I was like, I don't like this at all. This is terrible. And I immediately unfollowed everyone. The only person I didn't unfollow was Leanna. The tractors would continuously bring up the subject of Panda Lee and her age gap with DSP. You know, it's so ridiculous that this is the shit. I even have more stuff here. I'm not even going to bother because there's so much stuff that people have said about me. That I, I was dating Panda Lee when she was only 16, when I hadn't even ever spoken to her until well after she was 18. But, oh, but we have vlogs and, and we have chat logs of you bragging about dating a 16-year-old. Go fuck yourself. You guys are so gullible. If you believe that shit, seriously, like, were you born yesterday? You must have been. Because if you think that you see a chat log or an email that it's legit, you're dumb. Due to diminishing income from ads, DSP was needing some sort of supplemental income. He found this through Patreon. But I'm going to need some kind of a supplemental thing with what's happened with my viewership this year since the move. And uh, that's what I'm thinking of doing. That's the rough idea that I'm having, okay? And the, here's the thing. And ultimately, there's going to be people who I can't please. No matter what I do, people are going to uh, criticize me and say, now Phil's e-begging and Phil's taking your money. Listen, here's my philosophy. As long as the people who are willing to do the Patreon thing feel like they're getting a good, a good amount of value out of it, right? And as long as no one feels like they're getting cheated, right? And the fact that... Uh, you know, I'm not abusing it and mentioning it every 20 fucking seconds and it's ruining all of my content. And the fact that the content that I put behind that Patreon pay window is not only pay only that you can eventually see it for free. I'm okay with it. I would hate if I did become like all these other people. I don't want to become like all those other people, but I have to do something, right? Up to now, I've been able to make a great living off of just the ad revenue and the views. It's looking like a little bit of difficulty with that right now and I need to find a way to supplement it, all right? And that's why I'm considering doing Patreon in 2015. Many detractors would note 2013 as the beginning of the end. Even with the wave of negativity coming from evil AJ's this is how you don't play videos in 2013, 2013 proved to be the most destabilizing factor in DSP's life due to the financial situation involved with his move to Washington State. This is truly the beginning of the end for DSP as we knew him. Any success remaining in the past and opening up a new chapter of his life and career. As always, thank you for watching and please subscribe if you wish to follow this series on Dark Side Phil.